Constitution of the Mississippi Labor Council, AFL-CIO. One, two, three. Please come to order. I'd like to ask you all to stand and uh, we'll ask Brother Marvin Taylor to, to give the invocation, please. Our Heavenly Father, we thank thee for the night's rest and for the light of a new day and with all of its blessings and its opportunities for service. <coughs> we pray thy blessings upon us as we meet together in this conference. We trust that out of it will come good, that we can benefit and accrue to the membership that is represented here. We thank thee for the approaching holiday season that represents the birthday of our Lord, who saw fit to identify himself with working people, who was the village carpenter, the lowly Nazarene. We thank thee for thy word that says that the laborer is worthy of his hire, and that Christ said, I, my father works hitherto, and I must work, and that I must work the works of him that sent me while it is yet day, the night cometh when no man can work. We trust that thou, that thou will shower around us thy blessings and thy tender mercies and thy guidance, and that we will do all things in conformity to thy, for thy will for our individual lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We appreciate very much the people that have seen fit to come out and be with us in this meeting today. I recognize a few faces here this morning that uh, have not been in attendance at our last two conferences uh, where we've been trying to make plans for a coordinated organizing an effort. And before we get on with the business at hand, I think it'd be appropriate if we ask uh, each one to get up and introduce himself or herself in the latest show. So we'll start over here with Brother Morris and ask him to introduce himself. R.E. Morris, International Trustee of the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees and Rule Fix Machine Operators. We won't bother you, Alan. We'll get you later on. Uh, B.A. Yeah, Stokes, Painters International. Malcolm Prater Painters International and a lot of others. G.K. <laughs> Prater Painters International. Lord Bremer Labors International. Ralph Lyda Labors Local, Jackson. Ray Smith Art Rubber Workers. C.L. Watkins, Spring Park. Bill Stanley, CWA. Wiley Smith, the upholster. D.H. with all upholsters. August W. Barr, United Parts Worker. John Gillespie, I.B. Daddy. How about the. Yeah. Red Bay Steel, Steve Bell. Red Bay Steel, Steve Bell. Red Bay Steel, And then Corinth Central Labor Union, right? Right. Jack Heinrich with a paper maker. Bill Roach, the International Brotherhood of Folk Sulfite Paper Mill Workers. Willie Hines, the LPLCO. M.H. Foreman, woodworker. Lawrence Holly, aluminum worker. Vernon Hodges, Retail Clerks International Association, International Representative. Cliff Taggart, Retail Clerks Local 458 Mobile. Dwayne Carmen, Retail Clerks in Memphis. L.D. Morgan, AFLCO staff. Uh, John O'Malley, AFL Sales Staff. I'm Lester Null, third vice president of Potter International Union. <coughs> we'll uh, introduce these other people up here at the front of the room uh, later on in the meeting. Uh, we're not going to burden you with a whole lot of conversation this morning. The session today has been called primarily to see if we can't work out some arrangements, uh, get some understanding uh, within the ranks of our various unions about uh, target uh, areas, jurisdiction, and things of this kind. This is the third conference that we've had to, that we've had to try to 
work out and lay plans for a co coordinated effort, organized an effort in the state of Mississippi. And I recognize the fact that we don't have some people here today that we should have, and probably before the day's over, they will be here. Now, we asked you to come to meet with us uh, the last time and had some uh, very prominent uh, labor attorneys with us, reviewed with you uh, a new legal approach to organizing, and we have speeches uh, that was made at that conference up here on the table in front of us. Those of you that, hadn't, uh, that haven't received those uh, speeches and the, uh, the minutes of that last meeting, it's up here on the table here, the, the ones that haven't yet received them. We'd like to ask you to pick them up uh, and take them back with you. Now, <clears throat> as I've already said, this is going to be a working session. We hope that we can uh, reach some kind of an agreement on jurisdiction. We know that a number of unions in this room here today uh, feel that uh, that they have a uh, <clears throat> have jurisdiction in se several plants in the state, but we also know that we have uh, enough stuff, enough plants in the state for all of our unions to have something to be working on. You see. And if this effort's to be successful, we know and we recognize the fact that it's absolutely necessary that we come to some kind of an understanding on jurisdiction and that some of our unions uh, must come to agreement that they will help other unions in a particular plant, even though they might feel that they have a uh, claim on that particular plant. Now, we feel that uh, in order to come to this conclusion, that it would probably be best if we recess, uh, maybe during the day, and have a series of caucuses, and that the various unions that might have claim on various plants, if those unions, those representatives, would do us the pleasure of retiring to a room someplace, and come up with an understanding that this particular union would be given the opportunity to organize this particular plant without any interference on the part of another union. This is what we're really going to try to do here today. Let me give you an example. We've got um, IBW, IUE, and CWA three unions that uh, will, without a doubt, lay claim on certain plants in the state that all three unions might feel that they should have preference on this particular plant. And we think that uh, it would be foolish for us to stand here and let these three unions argue all day before all of us about trying to solve this particular problem. The proper way to do this is to ask these representatives to retire to a room someplace and we'll make that arrangement and see if you can't come up with an understanding among yourselves about uh, two or three targets. We'd like for you to come up with about two apiece is what we'd like for you to do. That, uh, that you would, uh, in addition to not interfering with each other, that you would assist one another in this coordinated effort. This is what we're really trying to do. Then, of course, we have uh, wood, Cotton's Union, upholsters, furniture, and another particular area that we know that we've got problems. This is really where the real problems are going to be. Now, uh, I've been talking with Tubman Sulfite and some other people about uh, these problems, and uh, uh, I felt that they had a claim on a plant down at Port Gibson because they've been run out of that place on a couple occasions and locked up a couple of times, spent some money down there, but <coughs> they don't seem to be too enthused about that Port Gibson plant down there. Jack, and if uh, if you feel that the paper makers want it, I feel reasonably sure that the pump workers might give it to you. That's what I figured. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you afraid of? <laughs> well, this is, this is the type of thing that we're talking about, fellas. <laughs> now, this is serious business. We think that the time is right, frankly, to
to mount a coordinated effort in the, in the state of Mississippi. We've had more success here in this state in the last year than we've had, had in a long time. And we feel that uh, if we can get some agreement here today from the various unions, and if we can set a target date, and if our unions can agree that on these uh, various plants on jurisdiction, and if they will agree to assign X number of representatives in Mississippi, and if we can move in at a given date, probably about the 1st of February, this is what we have in mind, and begin a coordinated, concerted organizing effort that we can organize this state within a couple of three years. This is where we feel about it. Now, we have, uh, of course, with us Bob Starnes, uh, Brother Williams, Alan Kessler, who is, who's been with us on the last uh, couple of conferences. <coughs> they spent a lot of time on trying to figure out and work out um, uh, an arrangement. And, and, and in other words, trying to make a determination about what unions they feel really have an interest in certain plants. And we know as a result of their work, some of the surveys that's been made that we do have some overlapping of uh, interest. And this is a major problem that we hope to solve here today. I might tell you that uh, since our last conference that we've had a, we've had several meetings. We have met with the legal people in Washington. We've met with Bill Kircher, the director of organization. And we have come up with what we think is a an agreement on the, what the organizing department can do in the terms of uh, some money, making office and secretarial help available to the coordinator, who in this particular case will be Brother Starnes, secretarial help and some equipment and things of this kind. Now, we had a, uh, quite a bit of discussion relating to the legal aspects of the problem uh, concerning uh, what, uh, if anything, should be done as far as the National AFL-CIO is concerned in approaching the new, the, the problem, legal problem from uh, the new approach that we discussed at our last conference. And it is the opinion of <coughs> the director of organization the legal counsel of the FLCO, and it's my opinion also, I might say this, that the legal work and the responsibility of handling the legal problems that might arise in this particular situation should be handled by that particular international union. Now, it's our opinion that if we have a union one of the smaller international unions that might not be financially able to handle this type of a situation. If we have a situation that develops, we'll say, where it appears that legal action should be taken and that particular union is not able to uh, pick up the tab and process this thing from a legal point of view, then at that point, we feel that the FLCIO, the FLCIO Legal Council should be consulted and then at that point that we should make a determination about whether or not this particular case should be processed by and the cost picked up by the FLCIO <coughs> itself. Most of our unions, such as IBEW, IUE, ACWA, those unions, larger unions that have uh, uh, several campaigns going in, on in the state would prefer, as we're told, to handle the, their own legal problems. Now we had the conference, of the last conference we, that we had, we spent considerable time and we had a number of prominent attorneys with us, as all of you know, the ones present at that thing, and we reviewed with you the possibility of a new legal approach. And again, I want to remind you, we've got these speeches up here for the benefit of those that uh, hadn't yet picked them up. 
Now, I'm going to ask uh, Director Williams at this time if he wouldn't come forward and uh, have a few words to say and give you the benefit of the organizing department's thinking, advise you of some of the work that they've been doing, and then probably after we've heard from him and some other members of the staff, we'll have a coffee break. And then we hope, frankly, that we can work this thing out before the day's over. Now, we've made arrangements and we've advised you that uh, we're going to have a two-day conference, but it don't have to last two days. It's up to you people. We've got the room for two days, but if we can get down to business, I think we can get this thing going and get it over with before the day's over. Lige, would you like to have a word to say? I think all of you know Lige Williams. Let us do well. My brother Ramsey and the national representative, our staff from Washington. I don't want to take up a lot of time being repetitious. <coughs> brother Ramsey has uh, briefly gone over the mechanics of this uh, program that we're talking about here in uh, Mississippi. And from the standpoint of the Department of Organization in Washington, we've, uh, and in our own group here and all over the country, we are well aware of what has taken place in the previous campaign that's been worked out in the, along these same lines. It's not something that we haven't done before. The only thing here that I think is different to what uh, we might have, we have encountered in other places is the fact that here in Mississippi we seem to have a very unusual situation uh, with reference to particularly uh, the difficulties and the problems you encounter when you go into the various areas of this particular state. Brother Ramsey mentioned to you some of the things that uh, necessarily had to be done with uh, legal matters. Seems to us from what we've encountered over the years in Mississippi that uh, we have in Mississippi a very well organized and a very well operating group that uh, opposes any <laughs> campaign that any of our unions attempt in uh, Mississippi. So much so that the apparently the law enforcement agencies from the local level to the state become involved in any sort of uh, campaign that begins in the most sections of Mississippi. So the legal angle of the thing and the legal aspects were discussed at our last meeting. Most of you were here. And as uh, you have been told, Brother Ramsey, this matter is being handled in a, in a different way by the legal departments of our, F, of our international unions and the FLCL itself. So we are here today to talk about the real meat in the coconut, and that is of the coordinated campaign that we are trying to work out here in Mississippi along the same lines that we have uh, worked out in other places that uh, us have been very successful. The first was in California, and I know that all of you international representatives was aware of that campaign. And the success of it, it's still uh, being carried on out there, and I understand they're still doing very well at it. Well, I believe that's about it. Right. They're still carrying on in California and in Boston, too, and some other areas. So we're not talking about something that isn't, uh, that, isn't uh, that you're not well acquainted with. We in uh, here feel that the Mississippi, the state of Mississippi, we've had some very active leadership here with the state council. Where the Rams has done a real good job in the state. His associates uh, seems to be doing every possible thing he can to break through on this thing and to get the membership in Mississippi that we think we'd have to have here in order to correct a lot of the things that has to be corrected in this state. And we're certainly interested in trying to help do that from the standpoint of the FLCIO uh, direct uh, department of organizations throughout the country. 
we are certainly going to cooperate with the state and the local central bodies because we know, as you know, that this is the grassroots and the real strength of the, of the entire trade union movement. And I think maybe we uh, haven't paid as much attention to that as we should have in the past. But we're going to do all we can to do that. And we're working with the central bodies here in this state and the state council, and they're involving all of the trade union movement in Mississippi in this campaign. If and when there's some way worked out to where we can proceed. Now, this is something, of course, that uh, we've all encountered as international representatives, and I've been exposed to a little of it in my years in the trade union movement. A little matter of jurisdiction is something that's a little bit difficult to work out among yourselves. It's uh, something that we don't have to decide, and I'm very glad I don't want to be in that position of making a decision on jurisdiction for international unions. But our, our part in this is to coordinate uh, uh, the campaign. In other words, as far as we're concerned, we're committed to this program. The extent of uh, Brother Starnes is uh, here in Mississippi. He, uh, he will accept the position of coordinating the drive once and uh, once you people agree on certain targets of where we can proceed with the campaign. Now, we know that there'll be some discussions, but uh, we feel that uh, the, the obligation and the duty of all of us in the trade union movement is to make the progress we have to make, which will... Uh, is down to the best interest of all of our international unions. In other places, there's been some giving and some taking. We have to agree here, if we're going to work out something, that we can all move in together and use the full strength of the trade union movement from the international, the FLCL level, right on down to the local union, central body, and state levels, and see if the strength of all of us together can be utilized for trying to do a job here in Mississippi that we think has to be done. Now, we know that all of you people are just like the rest of us, we're human beings. We have our jobs to do. We all understand that well. But I think we should all do all we can today to try to see if we can't uh, work enough together well enough to give us a starting point here in Mississippi to let us begin the campaign. And then, as I think, as we proceed along the, the, in the organizational uh, campaign in Mississippi, then we'll, if we are successful in making the progress that we believe we can make, then I think as we go along, we'll become a little better acquainted and we may be able to view our problems a little different and we'll work out some things that we may not be able to work out to start them. So we ask you to try to see if there's some way that we can work out enough of the plants that we've listed here as targets for all of you international union representatives to cooperate together on getting to these plants and see if we can't start to drive. Now, I think it will have an impact on what we, I guess we should say, the power structure of the state of Mississippi, which is very, pretty hard to deal with is, uh, we understand it. But you know, there's nothing impossible if we want to do it bad enough. At all, I don't think there's any place, and I don't think there are any workers anywhere that can't be organized if they, if they approach properly. I think the biggest trouble we're going to have here is where everywhere else is the fear among the people themselves to begin with because they know the situation, they know the pressure that's on and the screening committees that have to pass on their application before they get jobs, all of these things we've heard here in Mississippi. And it puts the worker in a very bad position there because uh, they tell me, and I think it's true, that most of these plants moved into Mississippi. The uh, Economic Council uh, to begin with, and then the local structure, the sheriff and all his associates, have people uh, set up on the Chamber of Commerce that passes on all applications. They check on his uh, relationship, they know who he owes money to, and all this sort of thing. So you can see there, if they've got this thing is that well organized, 
it's not an easy matter to go in there and to sell these people on the idea of taking a chance to, of losing their job and getting embarrassed and all this sort of thing. But I think it's possible to do it. And once we realize we, we have the, the power to do it and the will to do it, the determination to do it, I think it can be done. And I can say to you this, as far as we're concerned, as far as our, our region is concerned and our staff, we are committed to the program. We'll do all we can to assist in every possible way in trying to make this campaign in, in Mississippi a success. So once uh, we've worked out the program, as Ramsey's told you, we have our house in order. We'll be able to give the assistance that we think you will need in carrying out this campaign from the standpoint of the region here in uh, Mississippi, Louisiana. So it's a pleasure for me to again come here with you and try to do what little I can as the director of organizations in this area to assist in any type of organizing work that uh, we can help with. Because we're certainly interested in seeing the unorganized workers into their proper organizations. And then I think we'll find everything working a lot better for all of the working people in this area. Thank you for the rest. Lange. I uh, want to call your attention to the piece of literature that we placed on the tables here this morning, uh, Jim Poe and 14B. It's a reproduction of uh, an article that appeared in the New Republic uh, a couple of weeks ago, <clears throat> and it was my opinion that it uh, should be reproduced and made available to our people because it's a very pertinent piece of information uh, relating to the race issue and what have you. The part played by the business community in certain areas of the nation and what have you that uh, certainly relates to certain problems that we have in Mississippi and especially in organizing and related activities, and we have took note of the fact that uh, in putting the piece of material together that we had page two where page three ought to be. So we'd ask you to please uh, take note of that and rearrange that piece of literature whereby you would read it in its proper form. Now we do have uh, a stencil of this particular piece of uh, literature. We've run off several hundred copies of it. If any of you would like to have additional copies, we'll certainly be happy to make it available to you. Now, <clears throat> at our last meeting, we talked about uh, unions uh, coming to this meeting today uh, with authority to make decisions on behalf of their particular union. And we're going to assume here this morning that the unions represented, the representatives here this morning do have authority to make decisions on behalf of their union. Now, we're going to have coffee here about 1030, and we're going to play this whole thing by ear here today. We're going to give every one of you an opportunity to have your say and advise us as to how you think this matter should proceed. Now, after coffee, it's my hopes that we can have a few private caucuses between the various unions and see if we can come up with an understanding. We can't do this uh, deciding for you. It's going to be up to you to make these decisions. And I'll have to take note of the fact that we have two or three unions uh, uh, that I know that have an interest in the state that are not represented here today. IUE, for instance, I don't believe they have a representative here yet, do they? Have you showed yet? Yeah, someone spoke for Huh? Someone said IUE. IUE? Do we have IUE present? Now, <clears throat> let's start off with the Planners Union. We'll start down here. Fritz, you are, you are in a position here this morning to make commitments about... Uh, I'm in a position. I was in a position last time. Yes. But... Uh, mentioned the chairman about the uh, caucuses and the yeah. differences between different people that have to be worked out and this of course I'm perfectly agreeable to yeah uh, as you know from the survey we gave you we were very modest in this 
I'd like, I don't know if I have anybody to meet with. I don't know. I don't think that you have a problem. I have to know before. Are you sure? No. We don't think that you've got a problem as well, far I'm as the afraid. surveys. You <laughs> have. No. No, as far as your union is concerned, or as far as the planners are concerned, we don't think that we've, we've got a jurisdictional problem. Now, the thing that we want to know from your union is, uh, are you in a position? I'll be in a position. To assign somebody well, to well, work on a particular project which, that you're you interested in. Are you going to ask everybody this question? Yeah, now? right, right. Right. I don't know why you didn't do it like you did last time alphabetically, but if you want to start... Well, we're well. going to start at this end and work ourselves okay, around. Okay, fine, yeah. fine. Yeah. I'll let Malcolm speak. Okay. Introduce now, let me explain this to you now. The project that we're thinking about is a little bit different from some of the other projects. We are trying to work out a, a, a program here whereby each union with an interest in this state will be working on a project of their own. And in so doing, that they will be in a position to help and assist some of the other groups in a particular area. But we want it clearly understood that, that your union will be trying to organize a plant in behalf of your own organization. That you won't just be trying to assist somebody else. That we're not asking you to put somebody in the state to help us organize something for somebody else. You will have a target or two of your own. Well, let me say this, uh, Brother Ramsey. Certainly, uh, uh, I have been assigned by my boss to uh, head to uh, head up the uh, organizing department of the 5th District, which covers about eight states, uh, and certainly will work on a project. We, he's already said there's a project within uh, Mississippi. I, target project which we will take on immediately and when I say immediately sometimes right after the first of the year yeah uh, we are willing ready and able if that's the proper words to use to uh, uh, go forward with an organizing program within the state of Mississippi and certainly uh, uh, my <laughs> address will say that I come from Alabama but I have spent a little time trying to organize in the state of Mississippi back few years ago, and I do know something about the problems here. Yeah. Um, Lyons can testify to that, and there's a couple other gentlemen in here, and I'm sure can testify to the fact that uh, uh, I know a little bit about the uh, organizing problems that, fa that will face you in the uh, state of Mississippi. And certainly, uh, I think that the only proper way to do the job is the way that you have outlined that you're going to do it. Now, whether or not you're actually going to be able to get the international unions to do what you say you want them to do. This I will have to see before I believe it, because uh, too many times they come in and they say, yes, we're ready to go out and help each other. Uh, we'll even make a circle, and I've seen this happen, where they all make a circle and shake hands and say, we're going to help one, and one for all and all for one, and we'll help you every way you go. But about the time that you get into one of these campaigns, somebody else decides, well, I had a contact in that too, and they jump right in the middle of it. Now, if this happens, certainly you will destroy the program. Now, I say this to everyone sitting in this room. The only way to organize in anybody's town, wherever you go throughout these United States, is to start an organizing program in that town. And the minute you start one and are successful with that organizing program, you'll see organizers come from every place in the country into that town to see what the hell's going on. Excuse me. <laughs> Word. <laughs> but they do it. <coughs> I can give you an example. It just happened to me just recently in Augusta, Georgia. For 15 years, you hadn't seen a uh, union organizer in that town. And I went in there and organized a brickyard, of all things, but paying a representative to organize a brickyard. The town is now full of organizers. And they needed to be there because Governor Sanders has built, uh, been successful in getting uh, about 10 big industrial plants uh, to locate there. And the only people that was in the town that were organized industrial-wise was the paper makers and the pulp sulfide workers, these people. I think everybody, I don't think anybody else could claim much. If it was, it was just a small thing. But it's full now, full of organizers. And they're doing some jobs. They're doing a job. They've probably organized 3,000 people there. Uh, and this year, there's probably been 3,000 people organized in that town this year just because it was a program started. Now, if you start one here in Jackson, Mississippi, and you're successful in that program, 
then you'll see everybody come in and they will they will be successful too because you've opened the door you've let people in the community know that you're interested in their welfare and that the job can be done now there's too many people out here and that's working for a living in these plants that don't even know that they can be organized because no one's told them this uh, i'm also told that uh, if uh, the rest of the internationals make a contribution to the program, and I'm talking about financially, then we can also make that contribution. And certainly we will. I don't think that uh, everybody here knows the painter. When you throw a dollar up, we'll come right behind you. I'll be here to help you in any way that I can. Keep working on it. You are. Will it, uh, yes, will it be possible, do you think, for your union to have uh, one or two representatives organizing uh, organizers assigned to the state for a given period of time we know that it's not going to be done overnight that we think that probably this program will, should last well, and be let's say this, prorated right? over about a two or three year period so we have three of us here and all yes. three of us are going to be working with anything the, in the minute that we see that we have got a program started then we in a position to put another man on to stay right here with the program permit. Good. Good. That's, what we, that's what we need. That's what we need to know local here. If you're in a position to put somebody. Person. Now, in, in connection with this, now, you uh, keeping in mind that you will be trying to organize various and sundry plants, bring them into your own union, you will also be in a position to aid and assist some of these other groups maybe for instance, if we have a campaign going on in Tupelo, we have several plants, uh, uh, several organizers working on various uh, plants, <clears throat> you would be in a position to assist some of these people in addition to working on your particular plant, right? Certainly we will, and of course the only thing that this will uh, necessitate is uh, for Bob or Lige, and both of them know right. me very well. They know right. that uh, they've never been a program anywhere around when I was working at this right. job uh, pretty steadily, that they couldn't call me and I wasn't there to help hand out handbills. I'm an old handbill. In other words, you, you, you will put your effort together and, and let him coordinate it, and, and if right. you need be to send somebody over to Durant to help the clothing workers put out a handbill and you would be available and then by the same token if they if you needed some help then we expect them to go over and help you a little bit on occasion we right? Know, I know and, uh, how to work with Lyde Williams and Bob Stoins right. having worked uh, with him for a number of years and if uh, Lyde Williams helped uh, give me a little start in life in this business so uh, certainly I can uh, be happy to work with him in any way I can. I might say this, so I'm not completely happy with the uh, uh, plants or the targets that we turned in. Uh, I think well, we got a lot of them here. Now, you can just get all the targets you want. Well, we there's want plenty the target of targets for everybody. To ask for them. If they don't right. ask for them, then we don't ask for them. Right, two right. Or three that we're, right. We're we don't anticipate about. any problems right now about yeah. overlapping jurisdiction well, as far as your unions. I'll concerned. say this, that we deliberately left off two or three that we would be interested in because we think someone else should have a primary interest. We didn't want to create a problem at this point. Well, that's very if good. If they are not interested, then we'll let you know our interest. Good. That's fine. And you can be consulted with Mr. Steins and and uh, the due course of the whole thing. And it don't that mean that, uh, that these targets and the survey sheets that you fill out, it doesn't necessarily mean uh, that, that you've relinquished your interest in a particular plant uh, by filling that survey sheet out. Oh, it doesn't mean we're going to jump on all these little plants at one time, either. Right. Well, we understand this, but uh, we also uh, are interested in whether or not you can have some manpower in here. Well, let me see manpower. if I can make that a little bit plainer the way I yeah. look at it. Malcolm would be to tell you working in eight states. I live here. Yeah. I'm home about 50% of the time. Right. And all the time that I am home, if I can be of assistance in any way, I'm available. Right. I have never forgot how to work. Thank God for that. Uh, we, and we, the same thing goes for Stokes. He lives very close, and he will be available if he can be of assistance. Now, you mentioned the Northeast section. We have no program yeah. earmarked for the Northeast section. I don't anticipate it. I guess you have an example. I don't anticipate it. Yeah. But in this area, it would be very active. Right. Right. Good. Now, Brother Morris, you were there with the IUTSE, and we, of course, recognize the fact that the uh, 
in order for you to make some progress in organization and what in this particular area that uh, uh, the better organized we are, the industrial workers are, the easier your job's going to be for you. We recognize this and that uh, and that probably in the course of this whole thing that uh, something might develop that uh, might be necessary to call on your union to get somebody in. but. Personally, I don't feel that we are now asking you to assign somebody to such a project as this. Or, are you in that position? What is your We're thinking on that matter? At our last convention, my President Walsh stressed the point that we would have to get out and do an organizing job. And all of the officials of the Alliance are under instructions to make every effort, and we have urged our organizations to make every effort to organize the territory within their jurisdiction. Well, this is what I anticipate, and the reason I raise this question with you before I move to the back of the room, that when we get some activity going, uh, you know, it's kind of like a, a bowling pin type thing, that one thing brings on another, and we might possibly create some interest in your particular field. Now, when and if this happens, will you be in a, in a position to send somebody over we, to pick up the... You will be? Yeah. Good. All right, then this is, I think, where we should leave the thing with this particular union, Bob, uh, that if we develop some interest, uh, it might be a byproduct, we'll see, of the organizing effort. If we find a movie uh, house, we'll say, a theater, several people that wants to be organized, then we'll call on you and ask you to see what you can do, right? Right. And you will be in that position. You remember the situation yes. where we were down in Natchez, Natchez. right? And, right. Uh, we had the assistance of right. the uh, paper makers there, right? Or rubber workers, rubber workers uh, and the paper makers, yes. So we have shown interest prior to this meeting that we won't right. organize anyway. Well, we know that uh, you know that this uh, your particular area will depend on a lot on what we do with the industrial situation. You know. And in our, in our business, we have to depend upon the town being organized right. before we right. can do anything. Right, right. <laughs> but we know this. All right, let's move back and see what the laborers' union, uh, what kind of commitments they're in a position to make here this morning. Our regional director will be here. Should be here now. But yeah. <laughs> I know we've got some bad weather and a lot of people haven't been able to make the plane connections that would have been here already be here. because of this. Well, uh, do you know whether or not your union's in a position to make commitments on manpower? I'm sure he is. He, he'll just, he'll be here. But you want to wait and let him sit, huh? All right. Okay. All right, how about it, Ray? How about the rubber workers? Uh, Kramer, I know we're supposed to have been here, and he's been delayed, uh, but has he made any commitments to you? He did oh, talk to me on the telephone about the fact that they were very much interested, your union was. I know I'll work entirely in this state, you know. How yeah. many more people are going to sign in here? I don't know. But we've got several hiring factors. I'm working on about five or six right now. And uh, I'll be in. And as far as you know, your union will be ready and willing to participate in the coordinated effort that we're talking about, right? I understand. Matter of fact, you need some help, don't you? Well, I understand they're going to put some more people in here with you. Yeah, well, that's good. So we'll chalk you up as rubble workers up as having at least one man yourself uh, involved in the total effort, right? Yes. Okay. Now, we have the printing pressman represented here this morning who... Uh, hasn't haven't yet been I mean this is our first meeting uh, to attend and I know that uh, we have several different shops in the state that they have an interest in would you uh, are you in a position to make any commitments this morning well the only thing I can say is this brother Ramsey uh, I haven't talked to the president on this in fact you know that might be here I operate rather independently yes uh, we will have someone you will be or you think uh, in a position to assign someone in here. We will have a representative here. Now, this is what I think that we probably have in mind. I might uh, touch on this briefly with you. We've checked out some dates, taking in consideration it's going to take a little time to get uh, Brother Starn set up in business, get some secretarial help, and get an office set up. Uh, we checked with the hotels, and it appears that January the 28th would be a good date for us to ask our people to come together to kick the program off. 
Now, what we'd like to do, from our end of the uh, podium here, from our end of the program, rather, we'd like to call a general meeting of our unions, Central Labor Union officers, local unions who are interested in organizing, and we do have some good people here in the state that will be able to and willing to assist uh, in this total effort. We'd like to ask uh, them to come to a meeting about Jan January 28th, and we'll decide on this date with you, let you make this decision, and then initiate this program about uh, that time. And this means it'll be about February the 1st when we really kick it off, you see. I just throw this out for you to be thinking about it. Before we break up, we'll make that final determination, that final decision. Now let's move back to the upholsters union and see what positions, uh, what position they're in, and what commitments they are willing to make. Uh, Brother Ramsey, as many of you know, we have had uh, one to three full-time men in Mississippi for the past three years. Right. Our victory haven't been too great. Number of elections we have won, but uh, we feel that uh, our activity and our potential here or our potential here and our activity certainly hasn't been a waste. Right. And we have no intention of taking our forces out of here at uh, this stage of the game. Good. They expect to participate fully in this program, and we don't anticipate any real jurisdictional problems either. We think we can, can uh, work all of our problems. Good. You're in a position then to continue your program in Mississippi, you're in a position to work out jurisdictional problems this morning. In other words, you are willing this morning to sit down and go down to a hotel room somewhere with a cartridge union and the furniture workers and see what agreement can be made, right? That's right. I can't tell you whether we will be able to reach an agreement. Well, or not, but well we know we understand this, but we'll you're, in a position but you're right. willing this morning, right? That's right. We're Good. willing and ready, and we will make our position clear to the carpenter. Good. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's what we want. Way. That's what we want. How about that? Uh, how about you, Bell? You? Well, in October, CWA? I made a commitment to CWA that on a right. coordinated campaign, we'd have at least one person other than myself signed full time. Plus, uh, I mentioned this uh, volunteer organizers that would be trained in the communities where these people will be trying to organize, where I may not have anything. Uh, at the present time, as of this morning, I've got two full-time people in the state and expect on December the 28th to add two more uh, plus volunteer organizers. And I'm ready to get in the room with John and if the IUE ever shows up <laughs> to see if we can't resolve this. I don't make any promises. I think we're grown people and can work out our problems if we do really have any. They may be imaginary problems. I don't know. I think so. We think so. Up here at this end. Well, I'm prepared anyhow. to do that. Good. That's what we want to know. So we'll see if we can make arrangements for that room for you. The coffee ready? I understand the coffee is ready. It's uh, 1030. We would like to ask you to come back. And when you come back after the coffee now, sit where you're sitting now because we want to make this round and get the furniture workers and IBW. And I understand that the Cotners uh, will probably have their representatives here this afternoon. Is this right, Brother Jones? Do you know? I don't know for sure. I was told that you would be there and you had to go to look. Yeah, well, I know that there's one or two unions that's very important in this total effort that's not here this morning that we hope will be here. Right out I uh, advised you earlier, <laughs> we are hopeful that we can get this conference uh, out of the way today without having to stay here tomorrow. We recognize in all of the problems uh, existing, we made arrangements for this room for two days. But it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to be here for two days. And if we can keep this thing moving, and if we can get here from the various unions prior to the lunch hour, as far as commitments on manpower and what have you, if we can get this accomplished before noon, and then if we can get our some agreement, if we can get certain unions, as we've outlined already here this morning, to meet and caucus among themselves and report back here about 2.30 this afternoon, 
Uh, we feel that we can wind this conference up today and set a date for the uh, to initiate the effort. This is the way we feel about it. So we're going to try to move it as fast as we can, keeping this in mind. We'll try to complete this conference today if possible. Now, the aluminum workers' uh, representative has advised me that he has to get out uh, around noon. And with this thought in mind, I'm going to call on him now to see what uh, position he's in and what commitments we can expect out of the Aluminum Workers International Union. Well, Mr. Chairman, I've been authorized by the international president to do full support on this. We're putting a full-time man in at the start of your program, as I hear it from February 1st, talking about the date. And that if there's any financial assistance uh, necessary to maintain this, No, I think that is pretty well what we want to know, and of course uh, we want to know uh, before you leave uh, what your targets are, what plants you have a definite interest in. We know that you have one in Grenada, the line uh, plant, I believe it is. That is all that we have that I know of. Of course, I can support the That's all they sent. That's all they sent in was that particular plant. And to my knowledge, I don't think there's any uh, conflict. Of Right, right. We don't have any conflict, right. Now, I thought that I might go a little off with the uh, targets and so forth. I was in the original uh, AFL Seattle Drive in Los Angeles and was the representative that was there to represent the aluminum workers. And <coughs> as they started to, they started out about like you did here, where they mismatched group of people who have for many years had jurisdictional problems with one another years and they couldn't possibly coordinate to make it work. But I saw that program go through a successful campaign as was pointed out here by your AFL representative and where a group of people who had been loggerheads for many years got together, sat down, and was able to resolve those problems. Uh, as pointed out earlier by the painters, it's pretty hard to believe that this thing could exist in the AFL groups. But it can be done and is a successful operation there. Occasionally you run into some spots that are hard to get over, but I think that you'll find that as this program goes, <coughs> that this will be a simple thing to overcome. Now, we have cooperated on that program for many years and have been successful in organizing and working out these various problems that come along. But I urge all of you to, to get in this back room and do some deep, serious thinking about what you do because you'll find that your main aim here is to organize the unorganized and that I think is the object of starting with the start. Bear that in mind and sort of look over your shoulder if it gets too tight on your jurisdictional problems. So I think you'll find that we'll have a very successful campaign down here. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. You are, your union will assign someone to this particular situation and probably work on the line plant in Grenada, right? Okay, fine. That's good. That's what we want to know. And you, you of course, will communicate with your international union concerning this particular conference, right? Good. All right, Brother Barr, with the fun that you work with, let's hear from you. Well, as you know, you've been engaged for the last number of years in Mississippi. Organizationally, we've had <coughs> quite a few successes. I think quite a few. We had three elections in one or two. We worked pretty well independently over the rest of the labor movement in Mississippi. However, we were going to this wholeheartedly. Signing, I will sign one man as far as in the coordinated campaign, and also a half a man. I said, what do you mean by a half a man? I have an equal representative in Memphis who has been very helpful here in Mississippi.
particularly where we have disabled <laughs> workers. He's able and intelligent. In fact, believe it or not, he's the most capable man I have on my staff. So that's why I say we'll have a man and a half. I think the legal representative can be helpful to some of the other unions here. Right. I have full authority from the getting commitment for it. Your union uh, will then participate in the coordinated effort. And you feel that, uh, that you will be able to sit down with the several unions that's working in this particular area and work out maybe an understanding on target areas and resolve differences on jurisdiction. However, perhaps I might have a few problems with the contract. Well, we recognize this. We recognize this. And we hope that uh, before the day's over that the Cotton's representative that's been assigned to this conference will be here and be able to sit down with you and the upholsters union and IWA and work this, this thing out. You'll be here for the duration, won't you? All right, John, are you speaking by BW? Yeah. Uh, you know, Paul, you had uh, several representatives within the state over the past uh, two years doing nothing but organizing. And uh, we have been successful in some areas and unsuccessful in others. Uh, we will <coughs> cooperate with coordinated efforts to the fullest extent. We are not in a position to tell you how many men that we will put in here this morning. But we are to tell you that we will put whatever is necessary. And as far as the finances are concerned, as you said earlier here about handling our uh, legal problems, of course we will handle those ourselves. And I'm satisfied that uh, if there's other finances needed, that uh, we'll be able to contribute to those. Good. That's good. Now, you've got several representatives, several campaigns going on at the present time, and you do you anticipate uh, additional representatives in the field and to what you have now or not? Uh, yes, I can give you a definite yes on it, but uh, we are anticipating putting more in. Good. Good. Well, that's what we want to know. Fine. Thank you, John. All right. Let's see. Uh, because I've talked to Brother Jones, and he's not in a position to speak for the Cotton's International Union. We hope they do have a man that has been assigned to this conference, but he's got uh, uh, problems getting here, we understand, and we hope he'll be here before the, the day is over, and we can get him with the upholsters and the furniture workers and IWA and see what can be worked out and report back here this afternoon. Brother Rhodes, you speaking for the pub workers? Well, I can't make any decisions. That we're interested in, you know, certainly you'll have someone in here. For sure, we're all way down as we have a country council. Right now, we don't have any campaign going on in Yes, we know. And I don't think that we are interested in that. You think you and Jack Hydra could be able to work out uh, yeah, an understanding on jurisdiction? I'm down there. <laughs> well, we have a jurisdictional problem with other people besides the paper makers. Yes, I know this. How about printing pressmen? Do you think that you and Jack and the representative from printing pressmen can sit down and maybe advise us before the day is over about uh, well, we have certain a, plants in the state? We have some other people. IWA. IWA and also the Well, let me let me suggest to you this, that uh, knowing the particular situation that we have, a number of plants that I know that you, the paper makers and uh, the printing pressmen would possibly have uh, some interest in, this would be in the converting type plants, you know. Would it be possible to ask the three of you to sit down and see what maybe you could come up with on these particular plants? You'd try. You're willing to try. Sure. Good. So I wonder if we, we, some of us don't understand. Maybe I don't understand at all what we're doing here. If you're talking about uh, sitting down and coming up on a jurisdictional settlement for all of the problems of the of the uh, AFL-CIO, we're out of line. No, we you know can't, we're not going to do this. We I'm can't do some this. people think this. No. 
what we're talking about is the target. Target area, target plants. Uh, Unless where we, we're prepared to go right. into that target and right. do something ourselves, we right. should gladly say, all right, you do it and take my few people, whatever they may be. This is what <laughs> we're, we're trying to do. do that. We're not getting any place. Uh, we're going to have to agree that on a target that is specified, if there's no more than one man requesting it, it should be given to the man that requested it. Well, this is how, what we hope comes man, out of this, right? If there's more than one man requesting it, then somebody should back off. Right. Only right. on the target. We're not talking about overall things. Right. 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 What we hope to come out of this conference with, frankly, is that each international union will designate and reach an agreement with other unions on at least two specific <coughs> targets to work on simultaneously with the other unions. This is what we hope to come out of this with. We don't, we don't expect to solve all of the problems. We recognize the fact that we might, uh, some of our unions might uh, appeal so strongly about particular plants that uh, we can't reach agreement. And when, this, when and if this happens, and what we'll have to do, frankly, is to put this particular item on the shelf and not be part of the total coordinated <laughs> effort. Right. If we run into this situation, then this is what we have to do. Right. Okay. How about it, Jack? Uh, well, not being at the uh, policy making level of this organization, I'm not in a position to make any commitment uh, <coughs> for my international union in any way other than this. And it's, if uh, it's contingent upon where the targets would be and contingent upon being able to work out some jurisdictional problems that uh, we may have with the phone workers and with the press. Certainly, if there is a plant which we are able to work out a solution to, I feel confident that my organization would <coughs> assign somebody and would be there and would be able to assist the other groups in uh, whatever way and manner that we may have. Unfortunately, in the last since the last meeting, we have had a been involved in a couple of wildcat strikes plus a couple of legal strikes and other problems. Uh, I haven't been able to communicate with powers that be to any degree uh, concerning this organizational effort that uh, we're trying to formulate here. Uh, I do know that I will be talking with the regional director and some of the other folks in our organization uh, in the very near future. And possibly I can be in a position or <coughs> either have someone here at that particular time who will be able to make some very, very firm commitments one way or the other. Good. Now, Mark wrote me, Mark Fisher, the regional director, wrote me about this particular situation, and I gathered from that communication that you would be in a position here to speak for the Papermakers Union today. Uh, I have one particular situation in mind that uh, the three unions we've been talking about should uh, have a meeting of the minds on here today down in Port Gibson. Uh, we have... We have uh, I have been uh, advised and have been requested from uh, several different sources uh, to initiate and organize an effort in that area, and we've got three plants down there, uh, a wire-bound box plant, a plastic plant, and a cup plant. Now, each one of these plants have had some type of campaign at one time or another. Ray's been down there with a plastic plant. Pup has been down there and run out of the place a couple of times by the sheriff at the, at the cut plant. And uh, I think IWA might have had a situation in that wire-bound box plant. Now, this is the type of thing we're thinking about. If we can get some agreement out of paper, pup, and printing pressmen on the cut plant, and if we can get agreement out of rubber that they will have somebody assigned to that plastic plant, and if we can get some agreement out of IWA and wood and what have you on the wire-bound box plant, we move in that area with three particular campaigns going at the same time. Now, this is what we'd like to ask you to do before you come back this afternoon to meet with the three of you and get Wayne Glenn and see what kind of arrangement can be worked out with him on this particular plant. Now, we know that you don't have too many uh, situations in the state. There's a couple of um, converting plants we know of. 
that the three unions might have an interest in, but uh, we don't have to deal with that particular situation as much as we do with the Port Gibson thing right now. We've got a plant up at Houston, uh, a box plant, I believe it is, and a, and a container plant over here at uh, Clinton that the, that the Teamsters tried to organize not too long ago. And I might advise you folks, since our last conference, I learned just yesterday that the Teamsters won a representation election at Starksville at that uh, at that felt plant over there, Lockport, uh, Lockport, Jack, at Starksville. We've sat on our cans long enough for the teams to go over and organize that plant, so we can't let that happen again, I hope. All right, uh, how about IWA, Brother Gorman? Can you speak for the IWA? Uh, no, Brother Ramsey, uh, uh, except to this extent. Uh, since the last meeting, I've discussed this program here in this city with the international officers and the union. Uh, they are interested. Uh, I was given to understand that one of the vice presidents will be here uh, today. Uh, I've had no word that he's not coming, and but he hasn't arrived yet. So he would be the person to speak to the IWA on this program. Uh, they do say that they are interested in the program and uh, are interested in participating in the program. Good. Good. You think that, that uh, what you say? Uh, I hope uh, Vice President Roy uh, gets here. He's the man that's yeah. supposed uh, to... Well, let me ask you this. Uh, do you think it will be possible here today for you uh, <laughs> to sit down maybe with the Cotton's rep? and some of these other people we've been talking about in Port Gibson and maybe participate in that situation or at least uh, work out an arrangement maybe where another union would without the interference or something like this. Would you be in that position today? I'm not in that position, uh, Brother Ramsey. Uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, the vice president Rowley would be. Uh, and if he arrives, I'm certainly you want to sit down with him and discuss Good. Okay, fine. All right, let's, let's see what the retail clerks, uh, what position they're in here this morning. Mr. Chairman, Vice President Hall did not be here, and I told you earlier yes. they had a board meeting scheduled in Washington, and he is there. But uh, <coughs> we're definitely interested in the program. However, I know that probably all labor unions think that they are in a unique position, but we truly feel that we are uh, in this uh, situation. But we fall pretty brother over there that we're in the service trade and uh, we uh, we come into the backlash in most cases <laughs> we've tried to get into the front lash in this state we've had our brains beat out a few times as brother Ray's outfit has and so forth and right here in Jackson however we presently have some programs going on in the state uh, we will furnish and uh, manpower Commencement with, commensurate with our programs, which will fluctuate. Now, again, a, a unique situation with the retail clerks is that most of our organizing programs are st started with local union personnel, not with international representatives. We're having fewer and fewer international representatives. We're getting to be unique ourselves, you know. So that's the way our programs are started, and then we bring in uh, volunteer organizers, as the CWA man does, and uh, local union organizers from throughout our vision to work on it but with the programs that we have into effect <coughs> we will continue on and we hope to start other programs and we will finance our own programs in uh, legal terms and so forth now on jurisdiction uh, I didn't hear anyone report here this morning that we normally have jurisdictional disputes with if someone should come in this afternoon, I'd be more than happy to sit down and discuss the thing. I won't make any promises about coming to any understanding. Right. Uh, I don't you know. know what targets have been filed. I don't even know what targets have been filed with, with your organization, if any, None. for the retail clerks. None. And whether any have been filed from any of our competitors. Yes. Uh, but <coughs> some of them do show up. And uh, Bob knows who I'm talking about, and you do too. Right. Uh, I'd be more than happy to sit down with them this afternoon or in the morning or whenever, whenever uh, that might happen. Uh, I'm sure that uh, as the programs develop throughout the state, there will be interest developed in our field, in the retail field. Right. We would appreciate knowing about it. We'll have personnel on the job to try to take care of. 
Now you're that's in the a, that's a run around. Right on. Not meant to be. Uh, we'll be on the team and uh, you're in the same position as as this gentleman as you pointed out, and this is frankly what I think we need to know from you is when and if we as a byproduct of some of the activities we'll say, uh, some interest is created in the retail field. Uh, at that particular point, you think your union would be in a position to assign someone to the Definitely. project? Definitely. We don't anticipate you moving in at the same time as everyone else. Well, we will continue yeah. our program, and right. we would be more than happy then. We'll want that right. in on your next, your uh, February, January, February Good. meeting. Good, right. uh, But uh, uh, we would be in a position yeah. definitely to be in as these things develop. Good. 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 Fine. Good. I'd like to say this, I made this commitment at the last meeting, uh, Brother Andy. In the area, this target area, you have around Tupelo, Mississippi, and Amory in this area. Yeah. We have some members of the Kroger Company, as you know, was organized in yeah. Jackson. So the, the Kroger Company is organized in all of the entire state of Mississippi. In this particular area, we have people that have been members for 10, 12, and 15 years, and I mean they're good members. In this particular city, making $100 a week, I and mean, they've got a better job than the banker. And they're proud of their unions. And once a campaign starts in that area, these people have already committed themselves to me that more or less as a volunteer organizer, that after they get off work, they will assist you. Of course, uh, Brother Taylor understands over in, in Columbus, that store is the only store that's been organized. These people are willing to assist in this hard-nosed area that you're talking about. Right. They will go out and tell their friends about what the union has done for them. Who are you with? I'm with the retail, retail clerks. clerks. And the retail clerks have the Kroger store. Right. They have them all over the country, don't they? Well, we we hope so. <laughs> they got most of them. If any of them yeah. is, we don't know who they are. Where they well, let me let me uh, uh, report to you since our last conference. Uh, you, some of you don't get our newsletter, I think, probably. Most of you do, but we reported in that last newsletter that the Boilermakers Union. Uh, finally gained bargaining rights at the B&W plant in West Point. This is in the fringe area of the northeast section we've been talking about. They had several uh, challenge ballots that uh, were finally counted after almost a year of litigation before the board and what have you. And that union has been, or at least it has won the election. I don't know whether it's been certified yet or not, but uh, they, they won the election. Really? Right, right. Uh, one of the local union officers over there called me about this situation. Uh, uh, Hunter, you know, they, this has been a long drawn out affair. It's lasted really about 10 years, maybe a little longer. Yeah, and they, they finally won that one, and we feel that, uh, that this is going to help uh, move the, the program forward in that particular area. Uh, Ray's got several situations up around Amory and Aberdeen that we think that the B&W victory will probably help that, you see. And, of course, uh, as the thing begins to move, the retail clerks, we hope, will become interested also. What is B&W? Uh, Babcox and Wilcox. Oh, well, this we know. We thought you were talking about a labor organization. Huh? We thought it was a labor organization. New one. Babcock and Wilcox we're familiar with. Well, this is a plant, the yeah, Babcock. I know. What kind the of boiler plant in Westland. Boiler plant. They make big boilers up there. I thought you were talking about labor organization. Now, this is a new one to me. I thought you were huh? boiler makers. They've had a continual campaign up there for about 10 years. Fifteen. The BNW plant, huh? Fifteen. Fifteen? All right, fifteen. Fifteen years, you tell. Fifteen years ago. Uh, right. <laughs> right. Okay, let's see. How about the potteries here, Brother Nell? Uh, well, uh, I didn't know anything about this meeting, uh, Brother Ramsey, until Brother Williams uh, wrote a letter when I inquired uh, about a green manufacturing company in Tupelo, Mississippi. Which they we have their plants under contract in Metuchen, New Jersey. This is a sanitary plant bathroom inspector. Uh, we don't have uh, anything else in the state that I know of. Uh, although we're in the ceramic end of the uh, in the unions, and of course there's a lot of international unions that got pottery. And I found out the second cup of coffee I had this morning tasted good because that's one of our local unions in Buffalo, New York. They made that kind. Of. But uh, we will assign one and possibly two. 
uh, in the Tupelo area and that plant will assist anybody in that area uh, that's uh, organizing and uh, help get each other out of jail, I assume. <laughs> uh, that's about the size. <laughs> <laughs> Although I was uh, born and raised in New Orleans and uh, left there four years ago when the International called me north, I thought I'd go up where I could really organize, but it's as lousy up there as it is down here. <laughs> I don't feel too bad. <laughs> we got a litigation in uh, McComb, Illinois. We've won a plan there uh, two years ago last February, and it's now in the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals that the country's trying to set the election aside. <laughs> One out in Manhattan Beach, uh, California, has been in the hands of the courts now for four years, so. Uh, don't feel too bad when you get it down here because we're getting it up there. <laughs> but we will assign somebody in here in the Tupelo area, possibly in uh, the middle of January. And uh, I don't know if anybody here wants a bathroom fixture plant or it's, uh, in the sanitary end, so I don't look for no jurisdictional issue. Hey, Bob. Thank you. That's free now. Put it down. <laughs> now, that's, uh, you, uh, you feel that you that your union will be able to sign someone here about around the 1st of February when we plan to kick this off? Our board meets the 16th of January, and I'm sure that there'll be one international representative and possibly two in that Tupelo area Good. Uh, at that time, somewhere around the middle of January. Good. We found it more feasible to go after Monday's 10 or 15 uh, before they get two or 300, so uh, <laughs> uh, we're going to end up and make molds or whatever they're doing at the time. We did that in Summers at Kentucky, so. Right. We'll, uh, we'll have somebody in here. Uh, All right. You made it clear about uh, getting them out of jail. Now, how, who's going to get them out of the hospital? Well, uh, we have our own hospital expense and uh, our own uh, legal aid, so... Uh, <laughs> Well, we have several unions uh, not represented here today who have indicated... Uh, Him? We've been waiting for you. I didn't see you come in. About uh, We've been going around the room here finding out what commitments each international union was willing to make and whether or not they thought they could work out your jurisdictional problem. Yeah, yeah Mr. Chairman, uh, we are very interested in the program our international union is. And uh, as you know, we turned in several pilot projects that we were vitally interested in. <laughs> That consisted of concrete products yards throughout the state. I don't <coughs> think we'd run into too much jurisdictional problems <coughs> with uh, concrete uh, products. But that was pr the primary uh, uh, pilot projects that we turned in. Uh, we have now, I'm pleased to report, 10 full-time local <coughs> union representatives in the state. How now, many? Ten. Ten? That's big the way exactly. our locals is dispersed throughout the state, the state is pretty well covered. In other words, we have uh, two international representatives that uh, at this time, in other words, works the state of Mississippi. Brother Lloyd Brammer, he comes down as far as Jackson, Mississippi, and uh, international representative Edward Miller comes down, comes up as far as Jackson, Mississippi. That's from New York. Of course, uh, they have one state each other than their uh, portion of uh, Mississippi. We are discussing putting on a representative in the state of Mississippi for our international union. And of course, if we do that, why then we can cooperate further with the program. I'm pleased to report that one of the pilot projects, there are two of the pilot projects that we listed, we have now won NLRB elections in, and they are owned by Mr. Junkin, the new representative of the uh, House of the State of Mississippi. Uh, the new speaker of the, uh, of the House. Yeah. Down in Adams County. <laughs> yeah. That was, uh, his operation in Natchez, which consisted of uh, 85 people. And uh, we were won that uh, NLRB election. We have now been certified, and we're in negotiations. And uh, much to my surprise, even though we haven't reached a contract, in other words, negotiations is proceeding uh, uh, satisfactorily. Of course,
which we had the usual Coleman Lang uh, uh, organizing program against the town. But uh, as I said, uh, we did win the election. Good. And so far as legal matters, I believe we're in a position to handle them, those that we're directly involved in. But we will cooperate anyway uh, with the program. Now, insofar as actual cash, I am only in a recommended position <laughs> with my international union insofar as cash. But if we run up on a program that cash is actually needed, why, uh, we'll make a recommendation see how it would come out on. Good. Tim, what's the name of the two plants who have won elections in recently? That's the uh, uh, Natchez uh, uh, Concrete so, Ready Mix and the Natchez Sand and Gravel Company. Are uh, they both owned by Junkin? Yes, sir, both of them. That's what I thought. I understand yeah. totally owned by Junkin. Yeah. Did you make a friend of them? John yeah. Junkin. Did you make a friend of them? Yes. Yeah. It, it's the, uh, <laughs> the owner yeah. and the... Uh, Yeah. Yeah. And as I say, Elroy, he's not a bad man to do business with so far. <laughs> the whole thing may completely break down. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Brother Odom. No. You, uh, you, uh, your union is interested in participating in the joint effort, and you uh, feel that uh, uh, you, you feel that you might be able to assign uh, someone uh, to this thing around the first of February. Do you? Uh, whether we can sign uh, someone directly to the program, uh, Brother Ramsey, why, that I'm not sure of. If I'm given the full-time man in the state of Mississippi yeah. for Mississippi, yeah. why, then I will be in a position to do that. If I am yeah. not, why, then uh, we will have to work through our sources in each area where the uh, committee has got a program uh, uh, going on yes. and we'd be glad to do that because we're certainly going to call on the committee for assistance in our uh, 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 where we have a direct interest right now you wasn't here earlier when i explained to the group that the project we're trying to initiate is a little bit different uh, from some of these other campaigns that what we're really trying to do <laughs> is to get each of our unions to select at least two targets to organize in Mississippi and that we initiate a coordinated effort at the same time where your representatives will be working on a project for your particular union and by so doing then we will be able to assist one another this is really what it's about we're not asking these unions to sign someone to work on a program such as the Los Angeles project where uh, certain international reps were assigned to the project and they went out and organized, uh, you know, and then turned it over to a particular union. It's a little bit different. And uh, most of our unions have, have already indicated the fact that they'd rather handle their own legal affairs as you've outlined. And the, we don't anticipate, frankly, a uh, great expenditure of funds in this project uh, <laughs> situation might develop that we might have to request some financial help, but the organizing department has pretty well committed itself to the project. They'll put a certain amount of money here to maintain uh, the office of a coordinator, a full-time secretary, and uh, some equipment <coughs> to put out handbills and stuff like this for the effort. You understand? We'll have the office, the equipment to produce handbells and whatever material might be needed by the various international unions. Now, if we have a small union that gets uh, into a particular situation and needs some financial help from a legal point of view, then the FFL-CIO legal department at that point will review the particular situation and make a determination as to whether or not the FFL-CIO itself will pick up the tab on this one. But uh, we, we have reasons to believe that most of our unions would rather handle their own legal, uh, their own legal affairs, you understand? 
All right. Uh, our, our brother Ramsey, uh, I didn't specify a while ago, but our international union will handle all expenses as incurred by it. All expenses of your particular right. representative and the... And the legal fees and everything. Now, we want you to get the minutes of that last conference and the addresses we have here that were made by the lawyers at that last conference and the one prior to that by Dixon Pyle. We have them here. We've <coughs> done a mailing on this stuff and sent it out to all the unions. We're but, a small uh, international Yes, union. but a lot of our, a lot of such as yourself, this stuff hasn't found its yeah. way back to you. And we'd like for you to read this because it's very, very good, very important. We're very well financially. Good. Now, let me, Bill. Fear of bringing the wrath of Madam Secretary down on me. She shut the recorder off. I'm not going to say anything that important. <coughs> Let's say this, Claude, that in CWA, we will handle our own legal expenses. Yeah. And while I got this many labor people together, I want to make, I want to request some information. Brother Williams touched on it about these community screening committees, etc., that people have to go to to be recommended. I've been in conversation and a letter writing campaign with Frank Castle, who is the director of the Department of Labor for Employment Services throughout the nation. I was in a meeting in Miami with, in November with Frank where I had conversation with him and later have had correspondence in which he's assured me that an investigation will be made in Mississippi. And what I have in mind, I know of a few instances of where people who have gone through the employment or employment services or the unemployment office for job placement <coughs> have been screened or interviewed by that agency based on an employer's requirements. Has then been referred to that particular company and from that point, he has to go to a local committee for business people, usually the Industrial Development Foundation, for the purpose of uh, getting a sponsor or recommended or getting a yellow dog contract commitment out of them. Also, we find, and this is where I appeal to Frank Castle, that they're discriminating because of race. These Negroes are not getting employed until and unless they get sponsored by a local business community. If you have a, any, as you do your organizing throughout the state, if you run into situations like that, I wish you'd refer it to the coordinator because Frank Castle, and that's Bob Starnes, because Frank Castle is going to be contacting me for specifics. And I'd like to have some examples of other unions other than just my own, where we've run into that. And it's not just limited to Northeast Mississippi. Finally, any of you that are in an area organizing, which is not in what we talked about in October, our primary areas, Northeast Mississippi, Highway 82, from the Alabama line north over to Highway 15 on the western border, and within that 100-mile radius of Jackson. Right. If any of you are in the Clarksdale or Greenville or Timbuktu, bear in mind, I may have some members there, and I'd like to know about it. and. I don't make any outlandish promises, but I'll do everything I can to get you some volunteer organizers in those communities. Thank you, Bill. This is very you important. Can make that request to Bob Starnes and I'm I'll sure that uh, that all of you recognize the importance of what Bill said. That CWA, along with IBEW, uh, one of the few unions we have that have members in practically every <coughs> county in the state of Mississippi, and we have been able on several occasions to uh, find local union members in given areas, CWA or IBEW, that, uh, for initial contacts, and this is very important. And uh, if you do run into a particular situation, and this, when we get this thing kicked off, and would like to make contact with some local union people, then CWA and IBEW can provide those people for you. I think this is very pertinent. Now, we I noticed that the representatives of the Packenhouse Workers Union uh, just came in. I uh, might advise them that uh, we're in the process now of finding out what commitments uh, our various unions are willing to make in the form of manpower 
mostly manpower, whether or not they will be in a position to assign someone to Mississippi in an in a organized and coordinated effort around the 1st of February to work on a given situation for your own particular union. We're not asking you to assign someone here to help organize something for somebody else, but we'd like for you to come in at the same time with our other groups, and uh, you'll have some spare time, and they can be working together and help each other. This is really what we have in mind. Who would like to speak for the Packing House Union? I'm Russell Lassley, I'm the National Vice President of the Packing House Workers Union. Uh, unfortunately, this, this is my first meeting. Uh, I, I wish I had the background of the discussion that we've had in the past so as to more intelligently speak on the, on the issues and the problems, etc. Uh, however, on the question of manpower, resources, whatever else, uh, we, intend to, uh, we intend to do business. Mississippi, and uh, we have been doing some, and I might say that we've run into all the obstacles all of you have run into in attempting to do just that, uh, so we know the importance of, of manpower and all kinds of strength in order to get the job done, which certainly is necessary in this state. Uh, we are, at this point, about to uh, make a decision on manpower at the international level. Uh, however, we're not going to be in position to do that until our board meeting in January. At that point, we'll be able to take a look at our resources as a result of some increases in per capita that uh, our good brother in, uh, uh, voted in for us. Uh, we'll know what those resources are and what kind of manpower we can make available. Uh, that will be before February, so I assume that in January uh, we'll be able to say exactly what we can do. Now, we know we'll have possibly two people here, maybe three, but I don't want to make any firm commitment on that until uh, possibly January. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, of course, I realize you're at a disadvantage uh, not having been in the previous meetings and not having been sitting here this morning and listening to the various discussions that we've had. Uh, of course, the uh, Meat Cutters Union is not here today, but they were at the last conference, and they did make some definite commitments to us that they would be uh, willing and glad and happy to participate in this particular type effort. Is it possible, do you think it's possible for you and the representative of the Meat Cutters Union to sit down and work out an understanding on target areas whereby you don't, <coughs> and the meat cutters are not working uh, on the same plant at the same time? We've done it in other areas of the country. I don't see why we can't do it here where it's more important here than anywhere else that I know. Yes, well, I am, I'm sure that uh, Vice President Churik of, the, of that union uh, feels the same way. I've talked to him about it, and uh, what we'd like for you to do, if possible, in, in view of the fact that he's not here, is to see if you could sit down with him uh, between now and probably the, around the 1st of February and see if you all could come to some understanding about particular targets in the state, and if they would probably assign someone to... <coughs> A plant, and you'd probably assign someone to B plant. This is what we'd like for you to do. You think this is possible? I think so. Good. All right. Now we've uh, we've heard from uh, the various unions present here, and uh, I'm frankly uh, very much uh, enthused over the commitments that's already been made, and think that we will get this campaign on the way. Now it's uh, about 20 minutes of 12. And I know that Alan Kistler would like to have a couple of words to say before we recess for lunch. Now, after we've heard from him, we would like to recess for lunch, and those unions that have a particular problem, <coughs> such as CWA and IBEW, and I know you can't work the whole total picture out because IUE is not here, but see what a agreement <coughs> you can reach between the two of you and report back to us uh, 
about 2.30 this afternoon. We're going to give you a little time. We'll have an extended lunch period. Then we'd like for the upholsters union, the furniture workers union, and if the cartoners get in, if their representative get here, along with IWA, to see what you folks can work out and report back to us back here about 2.30. I don't think that we, uh, there's any point to uh, having a, a lengthy discussion between these various unions and this uh, hall here, that it would probably be better for y'all to retire someplace and work this thing out on your own and then come back and tell us this afternoon what you think you can do. Is this agreeable? All right, let's put it this way. Is it possible? Will it be asking too much for the two of you to make contact with IUE and see what can be worked out between now and February the 1st and report back to us at that meeting? Do you think it's possible? Is this asking too much? Well, Prater, uh, Prather, or is it Prater or Prather? Prater, Prater uh, has just recently taken over in uh, Ben Julie's place. Ben is retiring, I understand. He has retired. He has retired. And Prater will be their man. And uh, he's supposed to get here today or tomorrow if this thing goes through tomorrow. Does anybody know how to call him? I, I, in fact, there well, is we, a press we Bill. We don't know. We, we tried and were unable to reach him. As far as I'm concerned, there's a pressing immediate problem. <laughs> yeah, he's a good guy. All right. And I was just wondering if you knew how what, to What do you think about We'll try to reach him at, uh, at noon. We'll see if we can contact him during the noon hour ourselves, see if we can locate him and see what can be worked out. Uh, now, these, these, your unions, these three unions and the woodworking unions are the ones where the major problem is. And if we're going to initiate a successful campaign in, the, in this state, in my opinion, it's absolutely necessary that we get some agreement in this particular area. Mr. Chairman, uh, and I have a counsel with Brother Gillespie on this, but in the absence of the IUE, uh, and John may not concur in this, I'd like to have a neutral party present to help us communicate to the IUE what we might eventually work out between ourselves. All right, we can, this can be arranged. We've got... Uh, Bob and Alan Kessler and several other people from the FLCIO staff, and if you'd like for me to help you mediate, I'll do my best to help you. But if you'd like to have one of these people attend your meetings and see what uh, maybe they might offer some suggestions, we'll be glad to assign them. But we're, we're going to only do this uh, upon your request. You requested? All right, who wants to take on this assignment? You, Alan? Yeah, I. I I just happen to have a listing of where you're going to meet and with whom, if you don't mind. All right, let's hear from Alan now and see if we can't, uh, we'll try to get uh, recess for lunch here shortly, around 12, maybe a little bit after, and see if we can't wind this project up today. I think we can finish up today without going in tomorrow if we, if we put our minds to it. Uh, I know it's getting hot and stuffy in here and smoky. And uh, so I'm going to be, be, be brief. There are a couple of things that I think have to be said. And a couple of the, of the ground rules I think have to be laid out. And a couple of hopes spelled out. And it may take a few minutes. I crave your indulgence. I just want to remind you again that your union, without exception, Every union in this room is committed by virtue of the fact that its delegates to the AFL-CIO convention, the last two conventions running, voted in unanimous vote without a single dissent that in today's situation, cooperative organizing programs under AFL-CIO sponsorship are to be established and pursued, and in many cases, the preferred method of organizing. This is a policy of AFL-CIO. 
which was debated on two successive, in two successive AFL-CIO conventions and adopted by your delegates to that convention, your International Union President, your International Union Secretary Treasurer, your International Union Executive Officers, as their policy as well. Uh, we're not plowing untested ground here. You, you're not, we're not asking. You are not suggesting to your International Union that it take up some new novel revolutionary program that's fraught with difficulties and danger. Your International Union presence is already on record twice in a row in support of this kind of a program. And not only that, every one of your unions, I think, is already engaged in this kind of operation, either in Los Angeles or the Baltimore area <coughs> or in Iowa or in Maine or in Little Rock, Arkansas or Rochester, New York or Springfield, Missouri or Atlanta, Georgia. We have these campaigns going all over the country. There's nothing new anymore. All, we're, all that is at issue here is whether the unions in Mississippi are going to avail themselves of the opportunity that they have already availed themselves elsewhere. That's the only question. Is he going to do it here? The same thing that you've done elsewhere. The reasons for this kind of program are so obvious that I hesitate to restate them. But I think it's worthwhile sometimes to just take a minute or two and look over your look over the circumstances in which you find yourself. We've been organized into emerged uh, Federation, AFL-CIO, for 11 years. At the time of merger, it was figured that there were 26 million unorganized workers. Today, we're talking about 32 million unorganized workers. Now, these are not some strange, mysterious, untouchable workers doing some unusual, unique tasks. These are workers, men and women, who do the very same kind of job that your mem members do. <coughs> 32 million organizable unorganized workers. No supervisors, no self-employed, no domestic workers, <coughs> no mama papa shop people. These are organizable, unorganized workers in concentration <coughs> adequate to attract your interest. Thirty-two million, <coughs> six million more than there were at the time of merger. Uh, how can that be? We've organized three million more since the merger. Your union, these unions have brought in three million people at, at least. This is not counting any of the government unions, any of the any of the uh, uh, self recognition. Uh, voluntary recognition, none of the Railroad Mediation Board elections, just NLRB elections alone, approximately three million since the merger into AFL-CIO unions. And still the gap <coughs> grows because the workforce is growing and industry is spreading and we cannot keep pace. You cannot keep pace individually. That's just the long and short of it. There's no single union that can do the job alone. And that is why your president, two AFL-CIO conventions in a row, joined with other international union presidents, agreeing that this is the kind of program that should be instituted. Still, there are questions arise. Well, just what is a cooperative program? What does it do and what doesn't it do? Now, we went over this the last time, but let's go over it again. It's simply a device to combine the organizational resources to minimize duplication of effort and to minimize inter-union conflict. 
on the theory that we have only one opposition, the management, the boss. It means taking. It does not mean that someone is going to do your organizing, as Brother Ramsey pointed out. You still have the primary responsibility for doing the organizing. But in a co-op program, you don't have to keep guarding your flanks. In fact, more important, you can turn to get help on a systematic, reliable basis. It does not mean determination of jurisdiction. I, I don't know how to state that clearly enough. You don't have the authority. There's not a person in this room that has the authority to alter your international union of jurisdiction that much. And we don't have the authority to do it that much. Jurisdiction is not involved here at all. It should be crystal clear that this program has no relation to jurisdiction. And whatever agreements are reached in terms of specific targets establish no precedent for any other place in any other part of the country or even for any other plants down the road in this state. The brother from the aluminum workers can tell you he's been involved in that and a couple others were involved in the Los Angeles program. The unions that made agreements there weren't hamstrung. It didn't mean the fact that they agreed on, on target A in Los Angeles County that some other union could say three months later, well, look, you, you, you said we could have this, this kind of plant here, so here's this kind of plant there, it's ours. It's never been raised because it was clearly understood. There's no application anywhere, no precedent, no relinquishment of jurisdiction in the slightest. And it doesn't mean that a plant becomes frozen for all time. And this is one of the benefits that come from it. Again, uh, the brother from Aluminum will be able to tell you that this is actually ha happens in these co-ops. Some of the unions that in Los Angeles came in with a list that they wanted, like a laundry list, <coughs> for clearance and got them, and clutched them to the break, the whole of their mind. Within a year, they were coming back to the division meetings with the same laundry list, saying, hey, how about this? You know, you're racing me. We can't get to them for five years. Give them to somebody else. You know, put them back in the pot. Because working together, drawing on each other for help, extending the help to each other, they, they got rid of this, this, this business that had motivated when they first came in. And new targets <coughs> out there are being agreed upon every meeting, because you see, you'll have a continuing standing committee, as it were. Uh, one, once decisions are made here, this doesn't mean that uh, then, then you just go on forever on the basis of what you've done today. You keep coming together. You keep reviewing the situation. You'll, be, you'll find out you'll be swapping targets, taking on new ones. Uh, the LA program's been in existence now four years. Friday we got the minutes of the most recent meeting. There were 15 targets, new targets, agreed upon in Los Angeles, so it's a continuing program. Now let's take a look at what's happened today here in the city. First of all, you had a full day's meeting after the state convention which just explored the whole thing in general terms. Took, took kind of a real sweeping over arching look at the problem. And you decided you want to explore a little bit further. And then uh, some um, 16 of the unions uh, developed these surveys and submitted them to, to our regional staff. Those surveys showed uh, 186 targets counting for 38,000 to 40,000 people. And, and that there were two geographical concentrations of the major size plants. One in that northeast section, the hill region, 
and the other within a hundred mile radius of Jackson. Now while we talk about these two areas of major concentration, this does not mean that if there is a plant that doesn't fall within those two areas, that we're saying uh, so long, forget it. These are the areas of major concentration where, where the, the, the coordinated uh, approach can be the most effective. We took a look at the past performance records in Mississippi. These are the same figures we mentioned last uh, October. In NLRB elections, the unions of Mississippi are averaging over the last uh, recent years 1,300 people per year, certifications for 1,300 people per year. At that rate, it'll take you 30 years to organize the target that you've submitted. I don't think those people should be asked. That, you, that we continue using the same kind of paddle your own canoe approach that, that is going to take 30 years to bring them the benefits of trade unionism. In Los Angeles, in four years, close to 90,000 been organized. It's a bigger operation, you can expect it. In Iowa, four times as many elections have been won in comparable periods, before and after the start. It was really a spectacular change out there. <coughs> in Maine, I gave this figure to you two months ago, a one-year program netted 12,000 people. In the state of Maine, 12,000 new workers represent a lot. It represents a lot to the unions there, and it has already had a very decided effect upon the bargaining strength of every union in Maine, their political strength, and their legislative strength in the state of Maine. Since October, we've been contacting the central bodies regarding their participation, and it's very gratifying to see that the central bodies throughout the state of Mississippi are eager to devote whatever facilities or resources they have, <coughs> their officers, their members, their delegates, their, their meeting places, their mimeograph, whatever they have to place at the disposal of a cooperative organizing drive in Mississippi. One of the features of cooperative organizing is, is the development in every community in the area of the co-op drive, the development of a trained core of volunteer organizers, trained, I want to emphasize, trained in the techniques of organizing, of house-to-house -house call, of establishing contact, of working within plant committees, of, of development of literature. I think I mentioned before what effect it had in the city of Rod of, um, of um, Erie, Pennsylvania, where we had a little limited co-op drive. We set up a little volunteer committee. It, their only function was to act as kind of a chauffeur <coughs> for international union organizers who came in cold to that area. But can you imagine what a help that is? Someone on tap to just drive you around and point out the streets and the locations and to go to, to take you for, for uh, a house call. Save you time to take you a couple weeks just to get your bearings. They were doing it. it listen, there are so many small but very important benefits that can come. And this is one of the features of uh, a co-op organizing drive, the development of this kind of localized advance help for you that's there to be tapped. And so now we come to today's meeting. We hope that we can, I keep saying we because uh, although it's, it's your operation, uh, we're, we're part of it and that's why we, <coughs> we use the term we, that we can set the foundation here for the kind of program we've been talking about and you keep saying that you want. We hope to get target clearance today, not laundry list, 
if we can come out of this meeting today so that every union participating will have two clear targets that's a good that's a good beginning for a cloth drop in Mississippi you got two clear targets which you know you can work without fear of interruption with assurance of assistance two clear targets I don't think that that is an impossible hope that's what we're aiming at we want to be able to to lay the groundwork today for activizing these union com communities one of the problems you're encountering in Mississippi we've discussed it at great length in depth is the organized community opposition there's a union community to be organized throughout this state that we want to do organize the union community on your behalf to lay down the 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 uh, the preliminaries of a training program for volunteer organizers and a refresher program for full-time organizers our department is constantly working with international unions on refresher programs there, there's nobody I don't care how long you've been in organizing 30 40 years there's no organizer who can't benefit from a day or two days of sitting down with other organizers comparing notes talking over failures looking at the problem considering ways they can be solved possibly even considering a few new approaches <coughs> and that we hope to lay the preliminaries for a uh, scheduled program of that nature to set up the central information post every organizer is forever clipping things that he finds in a newspaper or, or scribbling little notes and he has his pockets full of, of, of stuff in his wallet and his suitcase and his, the trunk of his car we want to have a central location where information can be can is available to you that you can find out what the past history is there, what contacts are there, what resources are there. <laughs> the state, the, the state fed, you know, at, at the uh, state fair, got an awful lot of people to sign at their booth from all over the state and the place they work. And in Iowa, one of the one of the uh, one of the constant phases of the program is matching up <coughs> that kind of information with the type of with the information concerning plants out there so you can be, begin having contact we want to have a central place where we can have some coordinated pressure on the NLRB and this is important because there is coordinated pressure on the NLRB from the other side do you think it any accident that uh, Several weeks ago, the Blakeney firm, working in the Carolinas, challenged in the court the NLRB Excelsior decision. Was it just happenstance? No. This is a result of a planned program on the part of these union busting consultant firms to test, to test, and challenge. They're challenging it in Chicago in the crane in the crane company case. They're organized. Blakeney, Constanji, Lang, Shaw, Campbell. They just proceed to take. Just proceed right across the country. From from east to west, north and south. In every area there's one of these labor consultant firms. At the time that the uh, Land and Griffin bill was passed. They met in New York City and made a determination that they would not file with the Labor Management Reporting Bureau. And they haven't. They're organized. They pulled their resources. Five months ago, six months ago, they launched a concerted campaign to keep Jerry Brown, the National Labor Relations Board uh, member, from being reappointed. And out and out, overt 
no holds barred campaign involving a uh, hundred blue a committee of a hundred blue ribbon lawyers to try to keep him from being reappointed. Why? Because he, on a couple cases, uh, he came down on the union side. We want to develop some kind of pressure. Now the talk, this talk that we've had here of overlapping of target interests did not obscure the fact <coughs> that 93% of the targets that were submitted by the unions in this room are single union targets. There's no, there's no overlapping <coughs> in 93% of the targets. And they account for 88% of the workers covered in the survey. I think that's a good beginning. Our getting together in smaller groups is, is not an act of desperation to try to salvage something. It's an effort to eliminate, if possible, 7% of the targets <coughs> where overlapping interests show. Or to get agreement to bypass any unresolved uh, overlapping interest cases and move on. Now, so as to put the thing into focus, let me remind you what was agreed to in October. This was, this was read off at the meeting and was the consensus without audible dissent. The following proposal was accepted by the participants in the conference held in Jackson, Mississippi on the 30th of October, 1966. One, the institution of a Mississippi State Cooperative Organizing Program to be coordinated by Assistant Regional Director Robert Stone. Two, while the scope of the drive is to be statewide, the initial thrust of the program shall be within the two areas outlined by the survey conducted by AFL-CIO union representatives in Mississippi. These two areas are the northeast sector of the state described by highways 51 and 55 running north and south, and highway 82 running east and west. This is roughly the hill region. And the area circumscribing Jackson in a 100 mile radius. Three, at the unions here, uh, th this was the language that we used there, they, the unions here present signify their intention as to participation and indicate what manner of manpower commitment, present and future, they are prepared to make. Four, that, a, that there be a compilation a complete inventory of existing labor resources, the locations of locals, the facilities available, that is underway. Five, that the employment information put on registration cards by visitors to the AFL-CIO State Fair booth be extracted and matched with the targets submitted for the survey. That is being done. That the coordinator and his designee attend upcoming meetings of the central body in the two major areas of concentration to kind of brief them, fill them in. That has been done. That a meeting be scheduled no later than mid-December, at which international union representatives, having the authority to make decisions, will be expected to reach agreement on target clearances. That's today. Eight, the training program be scheduled for reviewing organizing procedures and training volunteer organizers. That was a program agreed on in October, point by point. And point by point, the State Federation of Labor, the State AFL-CIO, its president, Claude Ramsey, its secretary, Tom Knight, its staff, the AFL-CIO regional office, 
by Williams, the director, Bob Starnes, assistants, and their staff. The AFL-CIO Department of Organization, Bill Kircher, its director, John O'Malley, myself, and our headquarters staff. The General Counsel of AFL-CIO, the Associate General Counsel, the Chief Counsel of the Building Trades Union, have met <coughs> step by step, point by point. We've been the, all the and the, and your you and you have been following through. I don't think the groundwork needs to be laid. I think it has been laid. I don't think a commitment has to be made. It has been made. You're committed by virtue of your participation already, by virtue of the work you did done, by virtue of your recognition of the job that has to be done. I think we're all disposed to do it. And so that's why we want to proceed to meet in groups, not as a last gasp of desperation to get a program going, but in a realistic attempt to clear the underbrush that consists of a puny 7% of the targets submitted. I'd like to propose that the following unions meet in in, in, in this order. And, and referring to the IUE, let me say, uh, tell you that I have been in touch with IUE headquarters. I don't know why, why uh, uh, their representative isn't here. The only reason he is not here has to be a transportation problem. We have assurances from the international office in Washington of their cooperative participation. Like CWA, IBEW, are the sheet metal workers here today? No. no? They won't be here. Uh, they have committed themselves. They've called. IUE. Uh, to meet uh, in my room, room 720. in this hotel, just one floor below. I suggest that the carpenters laborers, rubber workers, and packing house, if you can uh, come together in, in this room and we'll divide you further. In this, is there another room available at this time? Uh, there, there is. Yes. I'd make my room available. It needs to have a double room. Uh, five sixteen. Five one six. It's available if you need it for. And uh, any other service? Let, let's get the service uh, uh, union. Then uh, let's have that for. What's that room number? Five sixteen. Five sixteen. Can we have uh, a retail clerk, packing house, <coughs> what other service, uh, the IATSE, what other service uh, union is here? Uh, meet in, in that room. And, uh, and those others I mentioned, the painters, uh, the laborers, the rubber workers, the uh, paper makers, pulp sulfide printing pressmen, uh, potters and brick and clay come together in this room. We'll, we'll use two, two different sections of it. We can do that because there are no problems there. Is, is, is that agreeable? Is there anyone not covered by this group? In the aluminum workers, uh, what time is it do you have to leave? Uh, we have no problem. 
right. Right, and the Greek seal is not here. Okay. Uh, then we're due to come back here to this room at 2.30. Is that sufficient time? It's now quarter after uh, 12. Is that sufficient time? If not, we'll make it 2.45. Are they going to eat come back? Are they going to stay or what? Uh, well, I think you ought to grab a bite to eat, yeah. Meet for 45 minutes. Now, uh, will that give you, uh, uh, Cam, what do you want to do? Let's have a consensus here. Do you want to grab a bite to eat and then gather in 45 minutes well, in those rooms? Many of them are going to eat in this coffee shop downstairs. It's crowded now. It is, huh? It's crowded now. If they would want to meet and then eat later. Well, they had somewhere else to go eat. I'm just well, I, I suggest that each group then decide what schedule you're going to follow. Yes. There's okay. one point that I'd like to know. Are right. The deficit for the 28th date. Oh, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna come to that next. We're gonna reach an uh, <coughs> agreement on that before we adjourn for lunch, so you'll know. Should I know? Yeah, so you'll know before you leave as to when. And what about the uh, CWA IBEW? Uh, uh, when do you want to meet now? And. Uh, when did you be better on this? With yes, I'm, I was a little bit later. Right, so eat. right. Then meet, then okay, shall we do it that way? Let's eat and then meet and then come back here at, uh, shall we say 245? 245. Okay, eat, caucus, and then come back here at 245. Alan, I suggest you wait. Mention the time for caucus. Just say eat, caucus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Try to eat within 45 minutes. That's all right. Yeah. The caucuses will start at 1 o'clock. The caucuses are not present there, are they? Maybe they'll be here well, today. Yeah, right. uh, before we break up, we want to some local people. We want to get your opinion and see if we can get a, an agreement on the the meeting in January where we kick this program off, where we bring in the central body people and the local union people and what have you, along with you. Let's see if we can agree on that date in order that those of you that have to leave early will know before you leave here what date that will be. We have checked with the Hotel Heidelberg and uh, facilities are available on the 28th. That's on a Saturday. If that's not convenient for you, then let's see if we can arrive at a date that is convenient for everybody. I understand that Bob has a conflict, Lige has a conflict, on, on, the, on the kickoff date when we come back together and we're going to have things ready to move on that particular date, you see. We've just checked with the hotel and got found some open dates. Now, we don't have to have it at Heidelberg, but it is convenient. We can have it someplace else. So. How about y'all checking your calendars here and see what kind of conflict you got on January the 28th? If it's not, it's not a good date, then let's find a good date. Yeah, I'll be here. 28, all right, we're going? Lige, is the 28th all right? I guess so. I might get to do something like All right. How about the group here now? Is the 28th of January satisfactory? I'm throwing it during the week. Huh? I'm throwing during the week. First of all, the central party and everything gets We'd like to bring these central body people in, the local yeah, union people, and it's uh, it <laughs> a Saturday, you see, is about a time to try to get them together. <laughs> We're the same problem you are. <laughs> yeah. Is 28th all right? Then we're going, to see, we're going to assume then that the January the 28th is the next meeting date where we initiate and kick the program set off. Set the time? Right. Can you set the time? Yes, we can Nobody set the time. Nobody knew the time this word, really. Let's what? set the time. I move that we meet at 9.30 a.m. on Saturday, January the 28th. All right. Now we all know. We have a motion that we meet. At the Heidelberg meet Hotel in Jackson, Mississippi. At 9.30 a.m. at the Heidelberg Hotel. Since I won't be here, I'll second the motion. On January the 28th. We had a second of that motion. Do we have any discussion? <laughs> if not, all in favor of the motion signify it by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carried so ordered. Now, the groups are going to meet at 1 o'clock, right? 1 o'clock. Do you think that we can be back here by 2.30? 2.45. 2.45. come to order. We've had a couple of new arrivals here this afternoon. Uh, several gentlemen uh, 
not able to be with us this morning uh, or with us this afternoon, I think we should recognize them and have them introduce themselves to you. Mr. Wayne Glenn over here, the regional director for the Fulton Sulphide Union. Stand up and be recognized, Wayne. <laughs> introduce the rest of your staff while you're here. Here's Representative Joe Bradshaw from Memphis, Tennessee. Representative Bill Roach, I believe he was here this he morning. He was here this morning, yes. Durwood here. Durwood Ruddy. Durwood Ruddy. That's the group that's, uh, that the paper makers, I might advise you that the paper makers and uh, the other unions have already agreed that Pump and Sulphite should have the cup plant down at Port Gibson. This is one announcement we want to make this afternoon. Now we have also Joe Kramer. Uh, District Director, I believe your title is in it, Joe. The United Rubber Workers. Stand up and take a bow, Joe. Glad to have you with us. <coughs> well, let me see. Do we have any other late arrivals? B.R. Upton. Yes, where is he at? Outside drinking coffee, probably. With a cottage union. He's outside. Uh, now, I understand that the that the groups that caucused uh, during the lunch hour and, and after the lunch hour have uh, actually arrived at some very good conclusions and made some uh, real, uh, come to some real understanding on some of these problems we've got. And uh, before we get those reports, I'm going to ask Bob Stone, the Assistant Regional Director, to I have a few words to say. Uh, we have a number of unions that uh, have actually committed themselves to the project that we're not able to be here today. Steel and ACWA and unions such as this. Uh, and Bob, uh, I can relate to you what this particular situation is. Then after he uh, completes his remarks, we're going to ask these groups to report to us about the decisions and the agreements that have been reached. I'm convinced that if we move the meeting along that we can complete the business here this afternoon. It won't be necessary to have a session tomorrow. I think we're in that position right now that it won't be necessary for a meeting tomorrow. If we keep this thing moving, it, we can finish it up this afternoon. Bob, would you have a few words to say? Thank you, Claude. I'll be very brief. The sheet metal workers called, advised that they were not able to be present, they wanted to be counted in, they would cooperate, they would put some staff people in the state. They listed one target in the state where they have a prime interest, one only, and no other union save one listed that plant at all, and that union listed it way down the line. I think it was about the last one on their list of about ten. So I think we can pretty well safely say there'll be no problem between the sheet metal workers and that union and the plant they want. The steel workers got into an unfortunate bind in that the staff man who was supposed to attend this meeting is involved next door in the post office and the labor board hearing which has been going on all week and will continue for the remainder of the week. He called his regional director the day before yesterday, and his regional director got a plane reservation and had a reservation made here in this motel when uh, a strike broke out, and uh, you know what that is, his president called him, it's a nationwide strike, it's a nationwide cooperative strike involving three or four other unions covering this country and a part of Canada, so the regional director couldn't come. This morning, a long-distance call from a representative of the Amalgamated Clothing Workers. <coughs> Their southern director, Ed Blair, whom most of you know, planned to be here, but he had a strike which started in uh, Russellville, Alabama, a couple of days ago. Yesterday, the courts descended on him with a flock of injunctions, and behind the injunctions came the state highway coppers, to enforce the injunction, and they batted two or three people over the head, and I don't know where Ed is now, but if many of you know him as I do, he probably is in jail. Or a hospital. Or a hospital. And he's been in both. 
But those are three unions uh, who would have been here had not unforeseen things come up. Ed asked that I express to everyone here the wish, desire, and intent of Amalgamated to cooperate in every fashion they can. That union has a number of locals in the state, probably some 6,000 members scattered around in the state in those locals, they are in a position many times to be of valuable assistance. Ed has a staff of people organizing in the state and intends to try to augment that staff. Any way that that union can cooperate with this effort, he asks that I say to you, he will undertake. Now, so much for those. I'm much impressed over what has been done, the seeming cooperative spirit among you people here in agreeing on targets. I think everybody here is to be commended, and with the spirit which has been shown, thus far, and which I'm sure is going to continue. I can't see anything in front of us except some success. Now, I'm not going to predict that we're going to win every campaign we go into. We are not. We probably are going to lose more than we win in the beginning because in many of these areas that first election is a necessity for an educational background. But when we come back the second time, we're going to pick up some more. So if the going gets rough in the beginning, let's don't get discouraged and let's keep going. And by this time next year, I hope we can have a meeting and report that we have several thousand people in the ranks of labor who today are not in the ranks of labor. And when we do that, among other things, we'll begin to correct a situation like Ed Blair's in today, where the state highway coppers are on him and the little stinking nitwit judges have issued injunctions against him. And with the power of an organization, we can make this a better state to live in. Thank you. Good luck. If I don't see you personally, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you, Bob, for those timely remarks. Now, where's Alan? Alan, would you like to come up and uh, give us a report on the caucuses and what uh, agreements have been arrived at. I understand that we still have a problem with one or two unions that uh, are not present and we can't completely resolve this thing, but we will have it resolved, we hope, before we kick the thing off in January, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Todd. Uh, I'm even more impressed, I think, than Bob Starnes at the, what was accomplished today. Uh, just to refresh, you know, during the lunch hour, we were to meet in several groupings in an effort to get uh, to resolve a small number of plants in which there were overlapping interests. Uh, we have now some clear targets. <coughs> I'd like to read uh, some of these off. <coughs> For the furniture workers, the uh, Lazy Boy plant at Newton. Uh, this meant that two other unions who, were all, who also had an interest in that plant withdrew their interest and uh, in favor of the furniture workers. <coughs> the upholsterers union uh, now stand uh, cleared for the uh, Satorian plant and the S&W fortune furniture and basic wood plants. The painters, in, in some instances I might mention where, where there was no uh, conflict, uh, more than two were cleared, but since we're talking in terms of two clearances, I just mentioned the first two. And the painters, they, uh, and you'll forgive me if I mispronounce some of these names because I'm just not familiar with all of them, the Catafoat Corporation in Jackson and the Mississippi Neon Sign, also in Jackson. The uh, uh, UPP, uh, the Hattiesburg plant of uh, Murray Antelope. Uh, the laborers in Jackson, two plants, Mississippi Material and Jackson Ready Mix. Uh, for the rubber workers in Tupelo, the Pennsylvania Tire, 
and uh, in Ripley, the Ripley shoe. For the potters in Tuflo, the Ream Manufacturing Company, and for the aluminum workers in Grenada, a line incorporated. Now, in the electronic field, uh, I'm very happy to report that while we cannot make a final clearance report, uh, we're almost able to. It, it's almost. It's almost just a matter of formality. But uh, in, uh, uh, since there is one other, uh, we've been in touch with the, uh, with the third union involved by, by telephone during the, uh, the uh, interim period. We have been in touch. And I am uh, fully satisfied in my own mind, at least quad, that uh, we will have agreements there. It's a three-way agreement on some very important plants that involve uh, those three unions, and these plants, I think, will have a critical bearing on the outcome of the campaign. I'm, I'm extremely optimistic about there, about that, and I feel that uh, before the week is out, we'll have a definite word there. There are several uh, unions present uh, whom we could, uh, for whom we could not. Uh, get clearance simply because the other union involved, uh, for one reason or other, is not present. But, uh, or, um, or the union that is not present has a conflict, and so obviously <coughs> after we could not um, uh, resolve it. But of that uh, 7 percent, we have reduced it substantially. And uh, I'm not an unusually naive person. And I think that 7% is going to disappear before Christmas. That'll be a good Christmas present for Mississippi. Mississippi. Uh, it, it looks to me as though you will be getting underway. And because of that, uh, Lige, let me put you on the spot right now. <laughs> we uh, had guaranteed, uh, in addition to Bob Starnes, that we would have two additional staff people working in Mississippi and not pulled out except for the most dire emergency and then only with uh, top consultation. I'd like to ask you if, if you couldn't put uh, now uh, L.G. Morgan at, well, uh, for at least uh, part-time. Part-time. Yeah. The reason I mention L.G. Morgan is that he had nine months experience with the right. Los Angeles cooperative uh, organizing campaign and has a very thoroughgoing knowledge of uh, some of the pitfalls and some of the shortcuts, and I think well, he would be I'll, helpful. Well, I'd like to say that as far as that's concerned, we're working out the satisfaction of okay. everybody. All right. All right. All right. So that, that will help the manpower, the skilled manpower situation a little bit. You don't, mind, you don't mind if we didn't consult you, do you? I, I might just say that at the last meeting, I told everybody I wasn't going to volunteer. Y'all just heard me volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> we have very democratic staff. Right. Yeah. I, I want to add my thanks, Claude, uh, to you, to Tom Knight, to, uh, to uh, Caroline here, all your staff, and to everybody here. It's a very promising beginning. I think there's some real progress going to be made in Mississippi. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, Mississippi is not a closed society, it's an open society. The, the open-heartedness of the trade unionists in Mississippi is an inspiration. And I'm just real proud to be associated with it. I hope to be with you next January, and that we'll come down with an outline of some training <coughs> programs and some staff to help you with it and we'll be with you each step of the way. Thank you, Thank you Al. I think uh, Brother has here. The <coughs> target that has been cleared as a result of this caucus for this 7%. Yes. What I'm wondering if people such as myself and others here, sometime prior to the January meeting, maybe sooner than that, could be given a list of what interest, what plan
plants have been cleared for what union? Yeah. And I, and I guess I keep harping on this. This is important for me where I know that yeah. you're getting volunteer organizers to work. Well, we will, uh, we will, uh, will uh, send each person present at this conference uh, minutes of this meeting, and in those minutes, minutes will be the targets that have been cleared and what union will be assigned to that particular target. This will be part of the record that you will receive. I'm assuming there's more than Al read off. Oh, yes, very much so. Right. Plus, uh, your situation uh, with IBW and IUE is something that we'll have to try to arrange for the three of you to, to uh, complete this understanding. And the same thing applies as far as the woodworking industries are concerned. We've still got the cottoners yet that have to be consulted and clearing some of the targets in this particular area. And, uh, and I think that by the time we come to the next conference to kick it off in January, that we will have an understanding all the way up and down the line. Don't you think so, Marvin, B.R.? This is B.R. Upton. He has a representative of the cottoners, by the way. He hasn't been introduced yet. He's come in kind of late. Do uh, you like that word to say about that, B.R.? I don't, I don't have any information on it, I don't see. I don't have any information on it, Tom. But don't you feel that we will be able to work out something uh, by the time we get ready to kick this off? Well, we got this, you know, Parker was at our last meeting, and we were led to believe that the Carpenters Union was interested in the cooperative effort, and that they were willing to sit down and work out and agree on targets for various unions, and they as uh, a number of other unions have, they took a position uh, which is justifiable that certain industries they can't give up. I understand that Parker's in an election day and yeah. couldn't, couldn't be here. But uh, when we get one of these situations, what we'll have to do, if we've got two unions that are determined that they've got to have this particular plant, then it has to be set on the side and it's not part of the cooperative effort. Because we can't get involved in this type of thing. When a, in a fight between two particular unions. I think all of you agree that this is the only approach we can take to this. Now, do we have anyone here that would like to have a word to say, Bill? Yeah, another question. All right. Meeting in January the 28th, we're talking about. Right. Uh, and I just became aware of, and there's some places that may not have been on anybody's survey list. Right. Where the Teamsters have moved in right. and gotten an election, certification, bargaining a contract. In that community, there's some other plants that, and I don't know what's on <laughs> whose survey. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that in my organization, there's been some changes uh, personnel-wise in some of the locals where it's developed now that in some of these that I didn't even have on my survey that are not in this area that Allen thinks can be cleared, you know, between now and Christmas. Is the end of mechanics, if anything comes up between now and January, for us to do some communication between, particularly in this electrical field, or maybe it applies to some of the others, where the timing is right to move, for somebody to move. We get into a situation like that, Bill. I think the proper thing to do is for Bob to contact the interested unions and see if he can arrange a conference with the three of you and come to an agreement in this particular area. We've, uh, we've been doing this around here for some time. Uh, without a concerted effort with Steele and IUE and IBEW and some of the other unions uh, where they've agreed informally to do just what you're talking about, see? So if a situation comes up, as you've outlined, then it appears to me the proper thing to do is to try to arrange a conference between these particular unions prior to the January meeting. And frankly, as this thing goes on, as I view it, this is going to be necessary from time to time because there's going to be interest developing areas that, and in industries that are not on the list, that have not been assigned to particular unions. Wouldn't you agree with us? Certainly. Alan, you agree? Uh, Lige? That yeah, this yeah. will be a continual type thing that we'll have to continue to work out an understanding on, on this type thing. I need to ask a question. Yes, Mr. Ramsey. Brother Fred. Uh, one of the two <coughs> plants that you designated for the R craft is a plant that ordinarily has three people contesting. Uh, one of them not present here at all. Uh, are you in a position to tell me I can go out without their okay? Um, let me say this to you, Brother you, Fritz. Uh, Brother Starnes, I'll see you uh, better work. Brother Starnes, yeah. before this morning, they'll be a part of the program or not. 
Yeah. Uh, this afternoon. Yeah. But they would have one or two men out there, and they have, in, in some instances, uh, mm -hmm. gone in and made a claim after somebody else started. But you can't fight it this way. You can't organize yeah. it this way. Well, what we, what we, I think, will have to do in this situation, uh, everybody, we have communicated with all the international unions that have uh, something in the state, an interest in the state. Uh, in the very beginning, they've been advised, they know about this conference, what our plans are, and most of them have, uh, you know, agreed to participate or at least advise us that they will, will as soon as possible, like machinists and groups such as this, cheap metal is another one, I think that we can hold this thing down to a bare minimum as a result of this. Would you not say? I frankly think I can. I don't think sheet metal is going to pose a problem for you, Fritz. They, they only indicated interest in one plant so far, one plant, and it isn't around here. Now, what do you see? What we've got to do in this thing, in addition to the agreements that we've had here already, that we've arrived at today, is to continue working on the problem and get uh, agreement out of the various groups as we go along. Now, let me give an example of what uh, we've been able to do without any such meeting as this. Uh, uh, two unions, IUE and IBEW, <coughs> here in recent uh, months, in the past year or two, informally have been able to agree that this union would take on this particular plant, and this union would take on this particular plant, and the result was they won several elections and have now got some contracts by just agreeing informally to this. Steel has been very cooperative <coughs> in this particular area, so it has a number of other unions, you see. And I think if we just continue <coughs> and expand the thing, it will come out of it all right. Now, I know that we're going to have some problems in a few <coughs> areas, as all of you do. But it's going to be up to all of us to keep working on the problem. John, you got a word to say? Yeah, you brought that up about uh, IUE and IBW. Might go a little further there. Yes. I said you at the present time, they have a joint effort established within the state of Florida, <coughs> St. Petersburg, within this area. They have a joint office, and uh, they have ten plants there. Constitute, uh, I've forgotten the number of people. But anyway, they have divided these plants to where uh, in number, if they're organized, they'll be approximately equal. And they're assisting each other within the organizing effort. In other words, we have an M handbill, they have another. Right. And God, if I B W and I B I U E can get together, by damn everybody else, you ought to be able to get together, right? Wouldn't you agree? <coughs> right? <laughs> right. Now, do we have anyone one else here would like to have a word to say? We're gonna adjourn this meeting before long. Claude, at the risk of uh, maybe sounding like a renegade union, but in fear of being misunderstood, some of my remarks, remarks being misunderstood this morning regarding jurisdiction. We know what your problem is. Our rival unions. Yes. Uh, let, let me make this statement clear and then I'm going to make a request. Yes. That we have no interest outside of the retail field at all. Right. And work incidental to it, and by that I mean the warehouse, the back of the grocery store, department store. Right. The uh, meat cutters, amalgamated meat cutters, who are one of our arch rivals, they're welcome to the meat department and all that go with it in the grocery store. But I do not have the authority and didn't mean to infer this morning that I did have the authority to give up any jurisdiction within the retail field. Now the request. Yes. If this interest develops, and I'm sure it will, that we yeah. discussed this morning as a result of the program of the state, yeah. I would appreciate uh, Mr. Hall's office being notified that these inquiries come in regarding the retail field, whether it be in a <coughs> department store, a, a discount department store, grocery or right. Well, you certainly will be advised, and I think there will be some interest developed uh, in certain areas. Uh, matter of fact, I know there's some here in this area now. I, I, some has been reported to me today, yes, and right. I will go forward with that. Yes. But uh, as I said, I don't want to misunderstood that I have authority or that we would give up our jurisdiction in the retail field. There will be some facts. I'm yeah, I think everybody here understood <laughs> what you meant this morning, okay. and that uh, it's a two-way road, that cooperation has to be... Uh, <coughs> agreed upon by both parties, not just one. It's not uh, yeah, it's not a one-sided affair. Did he add his back to us in the column between us? Did, I, did he say that they automatically gave up jurisdiction over the meat cutters or 
I wouldn't take it. <laughs> <laughs> now, Bill, you... <laughs> Bill, you're trying to... Uh, you're trying to get one started now, Bill. If we do represent them in places just as they represent our clerk. You won't have no yeah. We have uh, another member of the AFL-CL staff here that we haven't heard from yet. Uh, Alan, would you like to introduce him? Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, there's, uh, <laughs> most of you, I'm sure all of you know our, uh, miss, uh, the staff of, of the afl CIO that's working in Mississippi. You know Lige, you know Bob. I don't see Willie Hines at the moment. No, oh, there is Willie back there. You all know Willie and uh, L.G. Morgan, who will be working with you, hopefully, part-time. And Joe Mullins, who is, who is not here, but uh, most everybody in, the, in these parts knows Joe Mullins. All the women. Joe has many students. Uh, he's a great educator, and he has them, he has them all over uh, the state. <laughs> I, I wanted to introduce, uh, have uh, stand up so you could meet, and if he has any comments to make, I, mean, I want him to feel free to. A uh, fellow from our national staff has come down here with me, John O'Malley. John O'Malley is on our New England staff, is working in our national office on a uh, special assignment. Uh, he's no... Uh, a newcomer here, but he's no newcomer to the labor movement. You may be interested in knowing that he was the president of a local union in New England whose membership was 13,000, so he is not unaccustomed to the problems of, uh, of union servicing and organizing. Uh, John uh, did yeoman service here during the caucus period, and I'd like him to stand up, and if you have any comments to make, John, I'd like you to feel free to Make. John O'Malley. Well, I'd just like to say that uh, this has been my first experience in, in coming into the South, and I'm uh, very uh, delighted to be here. Uh, I did hear a gentleman, I believe it was from the Potters Union, say earlier today that uh, he spent a little time up north organizing, and uh, they have the same problems up there. Well, I have to somewhat agree with them, but I have to agree that uh, we really don't have the problems you have that uh, we do have uh, problems sometimes. It's amazing that uh, even in Massachusetts, I was to show you, this wouldn't start many of you people, but it certainly started me when I went down to a company one morning at six o'clock, and a police guy came roaring up and told me I needed a, a pass to pass out circulars. You know, well, to me, this was quite startling. Well, I'm sure most of you would find this quite calm. But I would like to say that uh, <coughs> This uh, cooperative thing, uh, since I've had the opportunity to be in Washington, I've had a chance to study the Los Angeles and, and the Baltimore, and I think it, it definitely proved, if nothing else, that it can work. And in my small experience today upstairs with the uh, upholsterers and carpenters, <coughs> workers, uh, that and furniture workers, that one of the things that wasn't reported today, uh, because it wasn't the purpose, was that each one came out with two, but uh, they went very much beyond that. We could have named uh, ma many others, but the purpose was not uh, to do that. And I'm sure that uh, even though that uh, I don't know you people, uh, that I'm sure as much as two weeks ago, somebody said that this wasn't possible. And uh, so I would like to uh, certainly uh, wish you all the luck in the world. And uh, let me say this, that uh, one of the things that uh, I think that uh, the people that I've met here today uh, certainly have proved to me that we have some good trade unionist leaders uh, in Mississippi and itself. Yeah. And the retail clerks and the retail hearse 
retail wholesale shirt. <coughs> In our last meeting in October, if I remember correctly, uh, officer of the barbers was here. Now, uh, their absence this time, or do we conclude that they're not interested in this spillover or not? No, no, they are. They are interested. The, the um, office workers union has also uh, committed themselves. Uh, and I think that the barbers have indicated a desire to also organize, you know. Of course, they're looking forward to the day that we organize all the workers uh, where they can go down and organize the barbers. You know how that is. Now, I'd like to call your attention again for the late arrivals to the article that we placed on the table this morning. Some of you are late arrivals. Jim Crow and 14B. An article that appeared in the New Republic written by Harry Golden, uh, who I think most of you know of, at least, in North Carolina, which is a very well-written article that, uh, that really points out, I think, the situation that's developing in the South as far as the business community is concerned, where the business community now is making its move to make peace with the Negro community at the expense of the trade union movement. This is really what reason we wanted to put this on your desk. Now, after you've read this story, I know some of you had not had the opportunity yet, after you've read it, uh, if you feel that you need additional copies, if it'll help you any, and especially in organizing situations, and we think that it can be used in organizing situations, we'd be glad to reproduce it and make them copies of it available to you. To and I'd like, order. Right, and I'd like to again call your attention to the fact that we just discovered this morning that we had page three in the place of page two, and please rearrange it before you read it. Just not to see it, then you'll know the difference. Right. Now, I'd also like to call your attention before we adjourn to the fact that we still have available a few copies of the minutes of our last organizing conference. Some of you didn't get there. We tried to mail it out to everybody, along with the speeches made by the attorneys where they went into the... <coughs> Uh, possibilities of a new legal approach in organizing situations whereby the civil rights statutes and, the, uh, and so <coughs> forth uh, had been used uh, by IBW. Those speeches are here on the front of the desk. Now, we've mailed this information out to all of the international unions, to the district directors, and what have you, but I know that a lot of you folks haven't yet read these speeches. They haven't got back down to you, so before you leave, if you'd like, come by and pick them up. There's about three of them sitting on the front of the desk. Now, it appears to me that we've about accomplished the, the business of the meeting. That we've done, a, sir. That we, yeah, we like to talk to you. That we uh, have accomplished uh, the purpose of the meeting. We made arrangements, as I told you earlier, for two days reserve this room for two days thinking we might get into a protracted type affair, but we felt that it wouldn't be necessary that we could actually do it in one day. And you mean you're going to let him talk two days now? Yeah, I'm going to let him talk two days. He can do it, too. Now, <laughs> again, for the late arrivals, for the late arrivals, the benefit of the late arrivals, the group this morning voted unanimously to call a meeting again on January the 28th to initiate the concerted organizing campaign, at which time we'll ask the local unions, the international unions, the central labor unions, and everybody interested in organizing to meet for this kickoff. We hope to, we've got some good people in the state that's ready and willing to go. We got some of them sitting in this meeting today that's very much interested in what we're doing here today that wants to get out and help in this field of organ organization. Now, Tom, would you like to have a word to say before we Yeah, I would. <laughs> I thought you would. I didn't, didn't say a thing to Bob Starnes wise all for that. Uh, <clears throat> I'll say in response to Bob Starnes' uh, remark that I've been insulted by intelligent people, so I don't pay any mind. It's not going to keep you, but just a minute. Actually, the business has been transacted. But I do want to say that certainly I've been encouraged here by the true spirit of cooperation that is prevailed here today. Now, gentlemen, brothers, 
this to me is the true <laughs> spirit on which the labor movement was built before any of us were even born. Any of us. And may I remind you that the kind of cooperation that we're talking about today is the kind of cooperation and the kind of unity that's been prevailing among our enemies all the time while you and I have been cutting one another's throat, beating our brains out and fussing and fighting over a group of people in a plant or on a job. We're just now coming around to where we ought to have been many, many years ago. And certainly I feel very optimistic and I appreciate your attention, your concern here today. Now let me say this about this meeting. On January 28th, I want to say one thing that hadn't been said. And this is where we need your help still from. Now it's important that we <clears throat> kick this organization effort off with a bang. I would like to urge you to urge officers of your locals that you have in the state who might be officers in central bodies of the importance of their responding to the invitation that they'll receive shortly to come to this meeting. Those of you that have locals, I want you to urge them, the officers, the leadership of those locals, to respond to the invitation that they'll receive to come to this conference. Because these people need to know and must know what you and I have done thus far, what we're going to do. They are the people that we've got to depend on after all of the organizers have been there, after all of the staff's in. There's certain things. I think you'll agree that the president of a local union or an officer of a central body can do that no staff member cannot do. So it's most important that you urge, in addition to the invitation that they'll get from us, you as their representatives, urge them to come and to take part. Now, this conference is going to be a two-day conference. And that second day is going to be devoted to probably the most important thing that will happen in Mississippi and can have a bearing on the success of this organizing effort. And it will determine whether or not the labor movement that we already have will survive. As a matter of fact, it will determine whether or not the state of Mississippi is going to go forward or whether we're going to go back in the hole and pull it in behind us. Next year is the year in which we will elect all of our public officials from the constable and the justice of the peace to the governor of this state. And we hope on the second day of this conference, after we have got the organizing effort off with a bang, we hope to lay some plans with the leadership from all over this state that we hope will see the election to the state legislature and to the other state offices and above all to the high office of governor of this state of some people that have a concern for our members and for all of the people, if you please, instead of a chosen few as has been the policy since you and I can remember. I just amounts to this, my friend, and you can take it or leave. This state's not going to stand still. If the election were held this afternoon, Ross Barnett, <clears throat> and I hate to speak the word, but I must, Ross Barnett undoubtedly would be re-elected governor of the state of Mississippi for another four years. And I don't have to tell you what, where the labor movement would go and what would happen to this state if we had to endure four more years of the fumbling, stumbling, bumbling around of that one man. So this means that we've got to register people, and above all, we've got a tremendous job of education to do. If we are to deliver that vote, we've got to form some coalition next year in this state of ours. If we elect somebody as governor, 
And let me say again, we're not going to stand still. We're either going to go back, and Lord knows we can't go much further back, or we're going to go far. Now, the choice is ours. I'm telling you people this because you represent the people and the unions in this state. And don't take this light. The people that things that enters into an organizing campaign, the problems that we have can go back to our negligence at the ballot box in the years past. It's very important, and it has a direct effect on the organizing effort that we're talking about here and now. But we can't emphasize too much to you the importance of having our leadership from throughout this state, from ever local and ever central body present at this meeting on January the 28th and 29th. Because we have got a job to do, and it is a monstrous <coughs> job. And it's going to take every single one of us doing everything we can if we pull it off. We are glad to have you here. And our wish to you is the best of everything to you and your family in this holiday season. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Mary. Claude. Brother Hines. Yeah, Mr. Barber, this problem come up here. Since there wasn't nobody here representing them, I want to say that I think I should have met with the IBEW because while I was out at lunch, Brother Williams and I got a call from his office. There's a letter in our office now from the International Union that two IBEW members in Tupelo, Mississippi had put up a cut rate barbershop. I guess the only shop we had there that had a union shop. <laughs> so that's not the only thing. I'm just wondering if uh, these crafts are going to take out after the barbers. I think I just did. We better, we better to find out something about it. A few years ago in Pascagoula, we had the same thing to happen. <coughs> From the baller man. <laughs> Man working all day in the shipyard in the ball maker and going out at night doing barber work. I think it was a sheet metal yeah. worker. I'll have to crack that. Yeah. The ball maker, sheet metal too. worker. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the ball maker <laughs> later on I'm, I'm familiar with the situation. And he is now a member. Yeah. But uh, I'm wondering, that in uh, Tupelo, we, we established one union shop there, and we've been trying to organize the local after years. Instead of that, here is the only real big organization in Tupelo and two of their members also now gone out and take the jurisdiction of the bar, put them in the barbecue. So right, it's all right if they'll come, but I'm just wondering if we're going to be raided while we're trying to organize the unorganized IBW. Well, if they won't come, you got to go after them. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we uh, of course, I think probably I think that, uh, Willie, uh, that uh, the, uh, the problem is, uh, is one that we're all very concerned with. It's not just in this field, it's in other fields. We've got uh, members of our organizations that, uh, that don't fully realize the importance of this type of thing, you know. We've got people that go out and do electrical work, scab on the electricians. Also, you know, it's not just the barber's trade. Of course, we all have an educational job to do. It's part of it. But uh, we just have to stay with it, work on it. Now, yeah. Well, listen, we, uh, we uh, told you we thought we could wind the business up, and I think we are in a position that we can adjourn the conference uh, one day ahead of schedule. We do appreciate the um, magnificent uh, cooperation that we've received from all of you those that have been present at the last conferences. And uh, we are looking forward to uh, uh, doing a real effective organizing job in the state of Mississippi. And I think that if we really do the job that we're capable of doing in the field of organizing, 
and in the field that Brother Knight talked about, uh, political action, that within the next four or five years we can see some real progress made in the state of Mississippi. At least we're putting our hopes on it. Now, do we have anyone that would like to have a word to say before we adjourn the meeting until January the 28th? Are you folks? Huh? All right, if we have nothing else to come before the meeting, we'll stand adjourned until 9.30 on January the 28th. Who does Billy Hyde work for? You are considering a similar program here in Mississippi. Now, I know that you don't have the membership in Mississippi that we have in Alabama. As I told you at the beginning, we have the largest membership numerically of any state council in the South outside of Texas. But by the same token, by the program which you have contemplated here, which uh, is a dollar and a half, where I was at a dollar, there's no reason in the world why you can't accomplish similar goals with your program that we have already accomplished and that we expect to accomplish. We think before the four years is over that we'll have a state council second to none, not second to none in the South, but second to none anywhere. Now we, after we got started on putting out the names of our membership on addressograph files, we found out what a, a, a terrific weapon this was with the politicians and how vital this would be in the next campaign. So we are going one step further now. We have been able to secure the names of all the qualified voters in 27 counties in the state. And just as quickly as we get all the names of the trade union members on the mailing list, then we expect to go ahead and put these names of qualified voters in these 27 counties, all of them, regardless of what strata the, the, the uh, society they come from, we'll put them on the mailing list. We won't mail them the same kind of literature, obviously. But you can see what a terrific instrument this will be in the next campaign. And the campaign in, in Alabama for governor, the, the uh, qualification deadline is next March the 1st. The campaign will be run in May. And long before that deadline, we will have the name of every trade union member, the name and address of every trade union member in the state of Alabama on a dressograph place. We will also have the name and address of every qualified voter in 27 counties. So long before that convention, the politicians will be coming around and they will be much more amenable, we know already now, to Labor's program and we believe with the election of a favorable legislature, which we know we'll get with the program that we have, because we expect to go out into the field and back these people, not only with literature mailed into their homes to support their, their candidacy, but we expect to back them with campaign contributions to the members of the Senate, State Senate, and the State House, and to the governor, and the lieutenant governor, and the Attorney General and the other state officers. We have money allocated for that program now, for television time, for radio time, for newspaper advertising, to really make organized labor the force in Alabama now that it ought to have been all along. We, we know the program is working in Alabama, and we are delighted to see Mississippi adopt a similar program. But just one little word of warning I want to pass on to your chairman here that I didn't have anybody I or any of the other officers to tell us this. And this is the only dark side of the picture. Nobody told us all the work we were getting into when we adopted this program. And I can assure you that the four officers of the Alabama Labor Council haven't had a minute's rest since we adopted the program. It gives you the tools to work with, and there's always been plenty of work there. And I went home a few weeks after the adoption of this program, and my wife asked me if I had my schedule with me, as she often does, to know how to plan any affairs that she has. And I told her I did, and she asked me if I would get it out. And I got it out, and she said, would you look at it and see if I could make a date to have dinner with you one, one day next week? And it's been just about that rough ever since the adoption of the program. So I want to warn all of you that by the adoption of this program, you are fixing to work Tom and your Claude and Tom to death 
because they won't have another spare minute from then on, but you will get results. Mr. Chairman, I certainly want to thank you for this opportunity to be over here and again to tell you how gratifying it is to see your state moving forward with such a progressive program and I want to thank you for the opportunity of being here with you today. Thank you, Barney, for those appropriate remarks. We are all already <clears throat> receiving some of the benefits of the Alabama program ourselves. I can vouch for the fact that these fellows are working because about every week we receive some correspondence from over there with some names of trade union members, members of organizations in Alabama that live in Mississippi. We're getting a pretty good list of those people already through the Alabama Council that we don't that we wouldn't have got otherwise. And we appreciate that also, Barney. We know that we have quite a few members of our labor movement <coughs> who work in Alabama, Louisiana, and elsewhere. And when, when and if this program is adopted, we will uh, be around to see you again. Thank you so much, Barney. It's a real pleasure to have you with us today. We hope you can stay around for the remainder of, remainder of the convention. Now, at this time, we're going to see if we've got some announcements. The Secretary Treasurer and our Cope Director, Brother Knight, I know has an announcement to make. We have been contemplating the possibility of having a breakfast meeting for the lady delegates and the lady visitors, the wives of the delegates, and any of the lady guests that we have tomorrow morning. I understand that arrangements have been made for that breakfast, so at this time I'm going to ask Brother Knight to give us the details, and then we'll try to find out how many can attend this breakfast meeting, which uh, Sister Murray will discuss some of our problems with you people. Brother Knight. Thank you, Mr. President. First, before I mention that, I want to announce that the 6th Congressional District Cope executive board will meet at 7 p.m. in either parlor A or parlor B. Now I say that for this reason. There's some other meetings going on. Now the board members of this organization will please uh, look if parlor A is empty, go in there. If it's closed or got somebody in it, look in B. So it'll either be in parlor A or parlor B at 7. That's the 6th Congressional District COPE Executive Board. Now, <clears throat> Brother Ramsey mentioned something to you about this possible meeting with the ladies in the morning, the delegates and guests, and wives if they're here. I have arranged a meeting for 8 o'clock in the morning in the Rolls Room at the back of the hotel downstairs, all the way to the back to your left. And uh, at that time, of course, we want an opportunity to talk with the lady folks just a little bit. We want them to meet a person who will be speaking later on in the day tomorrow, the uh, Eastern Director of the Women's Activities Department of National Coat, Ms. Murray. And uh, we're going to give you some coffee and some donuts and some fruit juice. Now, we're going to watch our waistlines, all of us. I'm even going to watch mine. So uh, bear that in mind. And ladies, we won't ever one of you there. Now the convention will uh, convene at 9.30. So we'll have an hour and a half. So you can get up. If I can get up at 6 o'clock, stay up till after midnight and get up at 6 o'clock, as old as I am, I know you young ladies can get up and be in there by 8 o'clock. So be down there, and uh, I'm sure that you'll enjoy it for about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. Now there's one other thing I want to say. Connection with this fourth congressional district, COPE. You know, we announced a meeting just before uh, adjournment here and we met for just a few minutes. Now there'll be another meeting of this group immediately following adjournment up here in the same place we met. It was requested that I name the counties in the fourth congressional district of Mississippi. Amit, Adams, Claiborne, Kapar, Hines, Jefferson, Franklin, Lincoln, 
Wilkinson, Walthall, Pike, and Warren. So we'll see you up here immediately after adjournment. Thank you. Immediately after adjournment this afternoon. Brother Knight tells me he's counted the ladies. We'd like to have a more accurate count of those that can attend. I believe the best way to do that would to try to determine who couldn't attend, who feels like they want. And then uh, we can deduct that from the total that we have present. That'll give us a pretty accurate figure. Would you please raise your hand to one of the ladies that feel that they can't attend? See one on this side and one on that side. Is that correct? Only two that feel, well, that's fine. We'll look for the rest of you out. If you're not, we're going to really castigate you in the morning. Yes. The wives of the vestors, this includes all of the ladies that are present at the convention. Delegates, wives, vestors, and what have you. All of you. We want you all there in the morning. We have a couple of guests that we didn't uh, recognize this morning, and I don't know why we didn't have this good buddy here on a card. I guess he must have not have signed one. Cy Dugas, represented by B.W. Cy in the house now? I saw him out there later. Cy, glad to have you. I saw him back there. I don't know why we didn't have him on a card. Also, we have Ray Allen, representative of the rubber workers. Is Ray around? Glad to have you with us, Ray. Hope you can stay with us. Then we have Dorothy R. Lewis, I gather was a member, one of our locals here also is a guest from Greenville. She here? That's your wife. Glad to have her with us. Do we have any other announcements now? I know we've got some committees that's going to be needing to meet. Where is the chairman of these Mr. committees? Mr. Chairman. Brother Holloway. The committee on bylaws, constitution bylaws, will please meet immediately on adjournment in parlor A. Immediately on adjournment in parlor A. Constitution and bylaws. Do we have any other announcements of the other committees uh, through meeting? I gather they are. All right, the 6th District Coop at 7 p.m., is that correct? Also in Paul A, James? Paul A or B at 7. Coop District uh, 4, here immediately upon adjournment. Do we have any other announcements? I'd like to call your attention to the program tomorrow morning and the importance of being here on time. Tomorrow will be the busy day. We have uh, been successful in getting a copy of a film that the National Manufacturers Association is using to indoctrinate the people of this nation from one end to the other against our trade union movement. We want to encourage each and every one of you to be here tomorrow morning to see this film. The question was raised when we reviewed this film, whether or not we should show it to this convention, because of the possibility of indoctrinating some of our own people by allowing them to see it. I took the position that we must show this film to the people at this convention, because you represent the leadership of the local unions throughout this state. If we can't convince you, of the importance of our mission and the damage that these people are doing to the welfare of this nation, <clears throat> then our cause is indeed lost. And this is the reason that you <clears throat> view that film tomorrow morning. Do we have any other announcements? If not, the convention will stand adjourned until the tomorrow morning. It, hold it, hold it, hold it. Somebody done thought of something. I ain't through with you. Wait a minute. I've just been requested to announce <clears throat> that there will be a Nickelodeon placed in this room here tonight for the pleasure of all of those that might want to dance. And you have been requested, if you would like to come back here and dance, to please give the sergeants at arms a quarter as you go out the door. And that will be used 
to put Pat Boone and Elvis Presley on the record player here tonight. Hold it, hold it, all right. The Nickelodeon will be over in the big hall out here to your left and down the alleyway of that. So if you want to come back over there and dance, I'll give them a quarter out there. Hold it just a minute. I've overlooked something myself. I've overlooked an announcement myself that I promised to make here. Yeah. The group from Crystal Springs that you met this morning has distributed a leaflet amongst the convention. It was there uh, thinking that possibly some of you delegates might would like to kick in a few nickels, dimes, quarters of dollars to their cause. I understand there'll be one of the representatives of the Vickers group will take your collection as you go out. So if you have any change you'd like to go for this cause, they'll take it from you. 9.30 in the morning. Thank you so much. 